Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Byrne. It's time for the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast. And, you know, as much as I'm checking in on you, I wish that you would, like, maybe check in on me sometimes. <coughs> oh, Billy Freckles. If you knew Billy like I knew Billy, oh, 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 what a cold. This fucking lingering ass cold has been in my house for two weeks and I, I haven't got it. And I've been interacting with my kids, being a good father. And I just kept taking vitamins and eating raw ginger and fucking all natural honey. That really isn't all natural. They just removed one ingredient and it's the same shit from the shit grocery store. And now they can put it into Trader Joe's and have it called, call it natural. Um, Trader Joe's. It should, they should call that place, you fucking traitor, Joe. <laughs> you fucking traitor, Joe. Um, did you hear about that? Most of the shit they're saying that's in Trader Joe's is in the other supermarket that was fucking poisoning you. And all they have to do is they, they're, they're, the food lobby is so fucking strong. All they're like, all right, all right, all right. We'll take one thing out. And now we can call it organic because we decide. And you're just eating the same shit minus one ingredient. Um, allegedly, allegedly. Oh, I'm sweating here. Roasting bacon, boiling. It's like a sauna. Um, holy shit. The fucking Buffalo Bills. I was watching that game going like they can't do this to their fans again. Like, they, they just, they cannot fucking do this. Um, shout out to that, that dude, Sass. Uh, they're going to blame you. They're going to fucking blame you, but it's bullshit. Uh, the fucking Buffalo Bills, I mean, they did like, it's like they wanted to lose that game. How many drop passes? How many times did you hear Tony Romo go, you know, he, he should have caught that? Now, granted, he sides with the quarterback, but there was times right through guy wide, like fucking open, and, and Allen puts the ball where it needs to be, right? Doesn't happen. Chiefs made plays, the Bills didn't. And I, and you know, that fucking fake punt on your own 30-yard line, that was a debacle. That should have iced the game for the Chiefs, but your defense bailed you out. You had like fucking six key drop passes, and even if you made that field goal, all that would have done was tie it up. You know the Chiefs were going to go down. They were going to go down. They were going to cut your hearts out one way or the other. So you got it over with. But, you know, the whole wide right thing just fits the narrative. Oh, the two saddest words, you know, in Buffalo. It's not wide right. The two saddest words are lake effect. <laughs> Uh, two saddest words in Buffalo, near Rochester. There's way more sadder words than fucking wide right. Um, anyway, the Buffalo Bills are not ready for prime time. Okay, that's just basically it. They're good enough to get there. They're not good enough to win. And, you know, if you want to take the frustration out on the field goal kicker, and really not take a look at your life and the relationships that you're having and how you feel every time he or she or they open their fucking mouth. And you're going to ignore that voice in your head that's saying, how in the fuck out of all the human beings I could have cohabitated with that I ended up with this person, you know? And the voice in your head just starts growing stronger every day, like the telltale heart, right? And it finally just, you know, just say it, just say it. I'm not happy. This isn't working for me. I want out. I want out, right? I'm doing it this weekend. I'm doing it. And then what happens? There's a playoff game in your city. There's a party. People drink. They're watching it. 
it's a disappointing loss. And now you're going to go home and trauma bond with that person that you don't, you just don't love them anymore. Okay, people, this is why you need to have a good game plan on Sundays or Mondays. Because it affects people so much more beyond just the game. How about that fucking pussy in the crowd just breaking down crying? I mean, that was fucking ridiculous. I'm sorry. Like, I would be, if that was my son, I would be like, what in the fuck was that? Were you watching a romantic comedy? You know, did, remember those fucking awful romantic comedies? And these fucking writers would always have to come up with that line <clears throat> to make all the women be like, oh, you know? You complete me? First of all, that is an awkward, clunky fucking line. You complete me. You make me want to be a better man. You could just say shit like that in the 90s and fucking women would lose their mind, like watching the movie. That line doesn't work in real life. You make me want to be a better man. She'd just be looking at you like, well, okay. Are you going to be a better man? You haven't really committed to anything with that fucking statement. Why did you give me that big, stupid, dramatic look before you said it? <clears throat> this is all a bunch of talk, Jack. I need action. Um, like that fucking dude crying. Crying like he's the first sports fan ever to experience a devastating loss. Go fuck yourself. And everybody, has anybody suffered more? Than the fucking Buffalo Bill fans. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Suffering. They're like mid middle aged sufferers. I don't want to fucking hear that shit. The Chicago Cubs didn't win for over a hundred fucking years. People born, lived, died. Never saw him win anything. <laughs> the Bills have been around for in the NFL since 1970. All right, they're 53 fucking years in, 54 years in. Quit your fucking whining. You lose a game, you take it like a man. Breaking down, crying in the stands. What is this, World Cup soccer? You're an American. You don't feel feelings. There's certain fucking groups of people out there. I know that they don't cry. I know they don't. There's no way Armenians, if they lose a soccer game, break down and cry. That's just not in them. Russians, there's just no fucking way. All right? And it used to be Americans. Okay, you, you didn't cry. You went home and you took it out on your wife. You snapped at your children. That's what you did. You didn't just break down and cry. Is that the Chris Bosch effect? Did he make it okay? Or was that that other person? There was somebody that said it was okay to cry about something and just film themselves crying. <laughs> oh shit you know what I watched the other day yesterday as I'm trying to get over this cold speaking of crying I put on the cry Tyrion channel it has tear in it too cry tear eon ion the cry tear ion channel and I watched John Carpenter's Escape from New York. I hadn't watched that. A, I watched that on cable when it came out in the mid 80s and I fucking loved it. I went back and I watched it. And it was fucking, it was great. It was, uh, you know, I would say it kind of reminded me of like, 
the road warrior or like the terminator in sort of the rawness of it but i feel like those movies took from john carpenter's style he kind of came up with that first i didn't realize that guy scored most of his own movies he had like a casio keyboard and he wrote like he wrote the theme to halloween Man, that's pretty fucking iconic, right? That's right up there with that guy writing a theme to when you're thinking about shit on Jeopardy. Do, 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 See? You just speed it up. It's the exact same song. I heard Merg Griffin and John Carpenter never spoke after that. That's true. You can put that on the Wikipedia page. Um, no, it was a fucking great movie. Um, fucking, uh, you know, what's funny is that when I was watching it and I was thinking about Kurt Russell and I was thinking how he did that big trouble in little China, I'm like, he's literally mocking his own performance in, uh, escape from New York. And I was thinking like, I wonder if that pissed John Carpenter off. And then I saw that John Carpenter directed that movie also. So they were kind of making fun of this genre of movies that they helped create, which I thought was really cool. And both of them totally worked because Snake Plissken is a total fucking badass. And, but there's, you know, of course you can look at a movie and, and make jokes about it, but like, it's still a fucking great movie. But then Big Trouble in Little China, he was just sort of making f fun of that whole like leading man action hero thing, which I love too, right in the height of it too. Not like looking back a decade later, like some hipster cunt. You know what is funny about hipsters is how they dressed, they, they dress like, you know, sometimes they'll, you know, the ones that dress like they're in a period piece, like movie. Like they'll pick, they dress like it's the 1920s or whatever. And uh, I always look at it like weird. Like, so you, you identify with that era, you know, it was pretty wildly racist in 1920. You know, they're dressed up like they're going to be, yeah, let me tell you something, see, sports should be white, for whites only, yeah. <laughs> no, I do not, the ideology, it's just the fashion. Um, anyway, so my wife's on me right now because I'm not good when I'm sick. Like, what I do when I get sick is I just sort of ignore it. And I just continue. I go, you know, I just keep doing whatever. So she yelled at me in a loving way. She looked at me and she gently touched my face. And she said, listen, you bald orange cunt. Okay, go to the bedroom, lay down, drink plenty of fluids and get over this. Okay, you're not playing drums. You're not going outside. You're not going to the movies. You're not going to go, you know. How great are my options even when I'm sick? It's one of the great things about becoming a stand-up comedian when you're taking time off the road is it's like you're a kid now, like summer vacation, except you're hemorrhaging cash every day. <laughs> <laughs> Money never sleeps, isn't that what they say? Um... I hate that fucking phony deep shit. Money never sleeps, rise and grind. Like all of these, these fucking things that are supposed to sound deep. And it's just like, no, you have just 100% bought into capitalism. That you're going to have to, every day you have to wake up and just work your ass off. And if you don't, like you're somehow losing and you're going to lose all of it. Um, ugh. I swear to God, like, they, they should just be, like, did I say this on the podcast? They should just have, like, a limit to the amount of wealth that you can attain. Just so you don't miss out on life. You know, like, just say whatever it is, $50, $100 million. And then once you get there, you're able to just have $100 million. You have $100 million. You're fucking good. You know? What the fuck do you need any more of that, Right. But then they, but they give you a sticker and it just said, I did it. You know, it's like having like the black AMX or whatever the fuck everybody wants, you know, I did it. 
I'm done. Are you? Yeah, are you? Then they're like talking shit. So it still feeds their ego. Uh, and then they can all compete about when they were done. You know, I was done by the time I was 36. So I was done by the time I was 34. Yeah, but you know, you came from fucking I'm done money, right? I'm a self-made, I'm doneer, right? And you just, you're fucking done. And then the rest of the money that you make, because some people are just really good at making money. You know? But then what would you do? If you keep earning money and you give it back, to the system is so fucking corrupt. And then also, this whole thing about giving money to poor people, like they're all fucking saints. You know, poor people are just like rich people. Some of them are cool. Most of them are assholes. <laughs> so you'd have to educate everybody on money. And it just, it just, you couldn't do it. That's the thing, man. You, you, you literally cannot help somebody out. You can't help dumb people out. That's what I've learned. Or stubborn people, pig-headed people. You can't help narcissists. There's, a, there's so many different factions of human beings that if you try to help them out, you just can't because of the way that they're wired. You know? Like, I know some really smart, talented people in this business, and you literally just cannot help them out because they're fucking full-on narcissists or egomaniacs and they can't take in any information unless they feel like it came from them or they figured it out or whatever. All right. Sorry. Just got a phone call there. Uh, I always forget to put it on airplane mode. Why would you put it on airplane mode when you're sitting in your house? Um, here's one for you. All right. As you go into the world, two things. Don't ever become part of somebody's entourage and don't fucking interact with somebody that has an entourage. Don't waste your time with that person. That's it. All right? I'm not going to say... Oh, maybe i say a little more on that. Yeah, you just... Just trust me. <laughs> don't be in somebody's entourage and don't fuck with somebody that has an entourage and you will be good. All right. Anytime, whatever fucking business you're in and somebody rolls up and there's like two or three SUVs, there's the dude you want to talk to and then three other trucks of jerk offs. That's it. Like that person is not a person anymore. They're just they're, they're not tethered to reality because all of those people, the one person that they're all underneath, like that person's like happiness becomes their currency. Keep that thing happy and then we all eat. And then at that point, nobody's calling the person out on any of their bullshit. They are no longer a, somebody that you could actually have a fucking conversation with. Um, there you go. That's a good one. Um, you, know, it's another, you know what was a good one back in the day was when you went over to somebody's house and you just sort of took a glance at their bookshelf and what books they were reading. You'd get an idea. I remember one time there was this fucking sleazy ass manager that wanted to sign me. And I swear to God, over his left shoulder, I'm taking a meeting with him. And he had a book on mind control. <laughs> I swear to God, it said mind control. <laughs> And, and that guy, obvious, for obvious reasons, I was not going to sign with this guy. All right? Even though I did, because I didn't have any self-esteem. I actually, I'm full of shit. I signed with him. I was with him for a couple of years. Um, but I shouldn't have. <laughs> let's, let's totally be honest here. <laughs> I fucked up. Uh, which is what wisdom is. Wisdom is what you learn through the fuck-ups in your life. And if you're not a selfish bastard when you get old, you pass on this information to younger people so they can avoid some of the pitfalls that you stepped into. And then we all become better people. Isn't that how it's supposed to work? Um, anyway, two reasons why I shouldn't have signed. One, that he's giving off this sleazy vibe. And the, the obvious, he's reading a book called Mind Control, which, of course, he was not even good at. Um, 
And then secondly, the other reason, he was like, if you're reading a book on mind control and you're trying to fucking sign a client, you should probably be smart enough not to have that on the shelf. Because if you do, all you're going to sign is low self-esteem fucking idiots. Well, maybe that is right. Maybe what he was doing was good. Maybe, he, maybe that was his genius. Maybe he left it out there. You know, that anybody that has self-esteem and sees this is going to walk out. But anyone who sees that and still signs with me, I'll be able to do mind control. All right. Well, I worked that out. Anyway, well, learn from me. If you're taking a meeting with somebody and they have a book on mind control, don't get into business with them. You know, and you wouldn't think you'd have to tell people that. But I wish somebody told me that. Oh, jeez. So what do we got here? We got the Ravens. We got the Bills. Ray, not the Bills. Sorry, we got the Chiefs. The Chiefs. Uh, and then we got who else? We got the 49ers and the Lions. Is it going to be a rematch? Ravens 49ers or Chiefs and 49ers? What would I like to see? I would like to see... The Lions versus the Chiefs, the Lions win. Or Lions versus the Ravens. And uh, I actually like the Ravens. I like both Harbaugh's. I like the Raven organization. I like defensive-minded organizations like the Giants, the Ravens, the Steelers. It's kind of funny, the black and blue division. Bengals have a really good defense. Browns have a good defense, you know. Uh, Historically speaking, I like... Those types of teams. Um, All right. So what do I think is going to happen? I think it's going to be 49ers versus the Chiefs. Uh, And I think the Chiefs are going to win. That's what I just think. I just think that the Chiefs are too well coached. And I just think that Patrick Mahomes, Kelsey, and and they, they just, they know how to win. They know when to flip the fuck this switch. Uh, Because on paper, the Ravens should win. And then it should be Ravens 49ers. And on paper, it should be the 49ers because they have the most talent or whatever. But uh, I think Brock Purdy's still a little bit young. Uh, We shall see. That's, you know what that is, guys? Hey, you know, it's just my two cents. That's all it is. Uh, Hopefully I feel better. I got to go do some fucking stand-up. I'm climbing the fucking walls over here. I went to go fly. I haven't flown in like fucking like two weeks. It's just been raining out here. So I finally go up there. It's, it's clear day, the day after it rained. Usually a clear day means, you know, high winds. That's why it's clear. You, would, you know, hazy day. People think, oh, it's a bad day to fly. It's actually the haze is just hanging in the air because it's nice and uh, calm air. You know, it's kind of sucks though. So like when you fly on the days you don't get tossed around, you can't, you know, see as much as you would like. And on the crystal clear days, you're getting bounced around. So of course I go up to the airport and there's no wind or anything. But I, as I drive in though, I see the flag and it's fucking blowing significantly. It's not hanging or dangling. It's straight out and it's blowing, not violently, but it's blowing. I'm like, wow, that's, more wind than what was at my house. And uh, by the time I was done pre-flight and fueling it up and everything, it was just like, you know, winds weren't bad. It's the gusts (coughs) when you're in a light aircraft. It's gusting that that just makes it not fun. So it was like 20 knots gusting up to 27, 28. And it's just like, all right, I could fly in this, but it's not going to be fun just getting thrown around up there. So anyway, I do have it all pre-flighted. So I think this weekend I'm going to take it up. Fucking dying to go flying. There's a couple things I want to check out. Um, There's an old car museum in Oxnard that's closing. Johnny Cash's house up in Ojai. There's this killer fucking bowling alley. You know, from like the 1960s that they haven't changed at all. You go in there, it looks like the Jetsons. I like doing shit like that. LA's such a fucking interesting city when it comes to all of that stuff. So I definitely want to do that. Um, Chomping at 
what do they call it? chomping at the at the uh, not the bit. I used to know what it was. It's the thing you stick in a horse's mouth. Oh, who the fuck knows? Uh, anyway, let's do the reads here for this week. If I even got any, I have no idea if I've even received these yet. It sounded oddly religious, didn't it? Do you accept the Lord Jesus Christ and all of his teachings? So help you God, whatever the fuck they say in all those mob movies. What was that one? Do you do you denounce Satan? That was Godfather. I haven't seen that in a long time. All right, now I got to come off airplane mode, right? I come off airplane mode, and then I go into my 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 fucking inbox, and then it's there, right? And then it's there, and it's not there. All right, fuck this. We're gonna wrap this podcast up. I'll do the I'll do the uh, I'll do the advertisements later. Oh, let me just do the I'll just do the intro. Okay, guys, now it's time for the live reads. And we're back. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, you know what I can't believe is F1 and MotoGP are going to be starting up in like another month. Fucking incredible. How much they beat the shit out of their bodies and they only give them like three months off and then they're just like right back at it. Uh, the big thing is is Mark Marquez is riding for Ducati. I cannot fucking believe it. Uh, I've always rooted against him and Honda and rooted for Davizioso and all those guys. Pekka Benyai. All right, all of those guys over at Ducat, Ducati. And uh, I don't know. Now I don't know what to do because I, I love Ducatis. Uh, I like just all of that Italian shit. The food, the cars, the motorcycles, all of that stuff. I've really been wanting to go back to Europe, though. Uh, I've become fascinated with, you know, I don't know, just all of the language and food and cuisine over there and how it just was through colonialism over here and the British ideology. And it just became like, you speak English, fuck all of this other stuff. And then we all had to kind of fall in line, just like any other country that Britain was involved in. It's really fascinating how they did that. And to this day, how like English is considered like the top language or the only language or the language of the world. It's like, why? It's, it's no better or worse than any other language. Um, anyway. Well, like when I was growing up, like if someone couldn't speak English, if they spoke broken English, like you literally looked at them like they were dumb, like they were dumb because they couldn't speak English. And even though they could already speak another language, their language was dumb because it wasn't English. How fucking stupid was that? And that was the prevailing thought when I was growing up. <laughs> I grew up in a dumb time. <coughs> Guess what? I fit right in. Oh, I fit right in. Well, as much as my lovely wife told me not to go play drums, I'm going to lose my fucking mind if I don't go downstairs, go out to the garage and fucking go fucking play some drums. I got to do it. I'm dying to do it. Uh, she's not home. She's out busting her ass today. So I think I'm going to go do that. All right. And that's basically it. I still have glass in my finger. I still have a cold. The Bills still have not won in the postseason. Fucking unbelievable. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to head out tonight. I'm going to do some fucking stand-up. That's what I'm going to do. All right? And that is it. And that is it. That's all I have to say. There's a bunch of other shit that I would say, but I'm not going to say it because I don't believe in it. What do you think about that? Huh? Oh, did I tell you I'm going underground this year? I'm going underground. I am not going to sit back and watch these two mentally ill fucking old ass white dudes run for fucking president. I'm just not going to sit there and watch the entire country act like their fucking idiot isn't a fucking idiot. It's, it's just, it's, yeah, I'm not watching it. You know, it's going to be like the fucking real housewives. Uh, except old guys they should sponsor like viagra should like sponsor this year's presidential election <laughs> brought to you by sunscreen and viagra um anyway 
I feel like maybe this will be the last time we have to deal with both these old idiots. And then I think, hopefully, it would be amazing if we just went youth. Uh, and by youth, I just mean somebody 40 years old, male or female, you know. We just, we got to get out of this. How about a 40-year-old Asian chick? Or like a fucking 39-year-old Puerto Rican dude. Just so, we gotta we gotta shake this up. This is just fucking. <laughs> this is just. I don't know what what are we doing? Oh no! What are we doing? I mean, Jesus fucking Christ! We have a warmonger with dementia going up against a reality show TV star <laughs> again. That's what I love. It's not, how did we end up here? This is happening. It's happening again. It's fucking wild. It is fucking wild. And there's people that actually have passion for either one of those candidates. Like, I get it, you're towing the company line. But to actually be passionately for one or the other just fucking blows my mind. This is just my two cents here. All right. I think I've said enough. Uh, that is it. Uh, but you go out, you have yourself a good day today. And you go out, you be nice to somebody, you know, regardless of their fucking uh, political leanings or whatever. That's it. I think that's the only solution. It's just regular people. We just have to be nice to each other. We got to stop watching this shit. Uh, I don't I don't have any solutions. I have no idea. I have no idea. But uh, I'm looking forward to being back on the road. And you guys, if you're nice enough to show up to my shows, making you laugh because that's what fills me up. That's it. That's all I got. All right. Go fuck yourselves. Have a great weekend, you cunts. And I'll talk to you on Monday. Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr. And it's time for the Monday morning podcast for Monday uh january 25th 2016 what's going on how are you how are you oh you know how i'm doing i'm not doing good oh everybody in denver settling in with a big fucking smile on your face aren't you huh you fucking pot smoking cunts with your goddamn hemp ponchos um, congratulations to the Broncos. They deserved it right out of the gate. You know, we took the ball. They stopped us. And I remember when they scored in the first drive, I was like, that was disturbingly easy. Um, and, uh, you know, they just, we have, they just, Vaughn fucking Miller. I mean, if the, if he was in the backfield any quicker during the game, he'd be taking the fucking snap. I mean, it was brutal. We just didn't have any answers on the offensive blood. And uh, that's what did it. Not the fucking field goal and not us going for it on fourth down. I can't only imagine what they're saying. On f I'm doing this Sunday night. I can imagine on the sports talk radio that they're second-guessing Bill Belichick. Yeah, second-guess him. Yeah, second-guess him. It's just Bill Belichick. Oh, what are you? Yeah, you're the other fucking... You've never coached on any fucking level. I'll tell you right now, why didn't they kick? They should have kicked the field goal. Then when they would have been in by five, and then Gronk catches a touchdown pass, and, and, and they're up by fucking... Uh. I love how people think like, like something earlier in the game, if they just did this, that, that that doesn't change everything after that. I mean, how many fucking back to the futures do they have to make that you see if you change one thing that it changes everything else? So if the Patriots did kick the fucking thing and we got to within five and when we got the ball back, the fact that a touchdown would put us ahead rather than us being down by eight, they would have had a completely different fucking defense. Okay, before they fucking do all of that second guessing shit, you know, fucking Verzi was was going, dude. I thought I said I was saying I was saying when they did it was dumb. Oh, did you, non coach Verzi? Yeah, I'm gonna listen to you as opposed to 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 fucking Belichick. Um, when they did it, I was like, I love the I love the call going for it. We weren't able to move the fucking ball at all on offense, the entire fucking game. We were the only reason why we had a touchdown was because they had that fucking lateral. And even then, then we missed a fucking extra point. It just it wasn't our day. Even when we had got a gift, we fucked it up and then we gave it right back with a pick and then they scored. But um, yeah, we weren't able to move the fucking ball. 
Every time Brady went back, there was somebody in his face, you know, chomping at the fucking his, his legs as he was trying to throw the fucking thing. You're that close. I, I, I agreed with going for it. It didn't work out, but, you know, that's how life is sometimes. So, um, but it was a great season. And um, for what they accomplished with all the injuries and all that type of shit, it was amazing. And uh, I got to tell you, I am um, I'm definitely rooting for uh, Peyton Manning. I'd like to see him go out like John Elway. It'd be pretty cool if another guy in the Broncos does that. But uh, then you also you got to love Cam Newton, you know. Jesus Christ. The only thing I don't like about Cam Newton is one more person tells me there's nobody having more fun than him. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. There's nobody having more fun than Cam Newton. Cam Newton, he's like a kid on Christmas. He's like a, he's like a kid with a second birthday. He's like, it's like, I get it. He's having fun. He's also totally fucking hamming it up and making sure his next sneaker deal would be, it will be even 10 times what the fuck he has right now. Let's not just... Let's not be totally naive here and just act like everything he's doing is just because he loves playing the game. He wasn't this fucking animated when he was at uh, uh, fucking Auburn. I used to watch those games. Root against Hardy, Alabama. I used to root against him. So I would watch and I was I, – he, he wasn't doing all that shit. But then again, he couldn't get paid, or at least legally he couldn't get paid back then. So, you know, what was the point? dance it every time he fucking t- i love when that one guy fucking uh they they threw the screen pass and he ran all the way to the other side of the field by the time he gets there cam newton w- runs in with him and kind of fucking uh, jumps in on that guy's super bowl uh super bowl, his touchdown celebrate celebration and then the cameraman is just following cam newton for the rest of the time and um in my uh in my business that's uh that's called uh, not not stealing a scene. It's called uh, ah Jesus Christ! I don't do enough acting to even know. Stealing a scene is when you're better than the other person. Upstaging somebody. He was upstaging him. So um, I, I just don't need anybody else telling me how much fun Cam Newton's having. I get it. He's having a good time, but he's also completely hamming it up because when he does, he makes a zillion dollars. However, as crushing as the Patriots' loss was, like I literally had to I had to go for a walk. After they lost. Um, and I got to tell you, I felt like we were going to lose that game. You know, sometime in the second quarter, I was just like, this. I can feel it. This just isn't our day. It just wasn't. Brady never, I mean, they were all over him. He never got comfortable. And uh, he wasn't screaming and yelling and getting people going. I thought, but our fucking defense played great. Um, but I, I don't know. I, you just Sometimes you just feel it. It's just not your fucking day. So I literally had to go for a walk. <laughs> I went to the bank. I mailed something. I got the car washed. There was like nobody there. It was like a ghost town. It was just like, you know, some fucking nerds or whatever who don't give a shit about sports and some poor bastards who had to work. And, um, yeah, I went to the car wash and then I went to this, uh, uh, I don't know, Mediterranean, Middle Eastern, whatever the fuck it is. Got one of those wraps, the shawarma wraps, whatever the fuck you call it. And it actually worked out perfect. I walked a few blocks over. I got the wrap. I ate it. I watched some of the Carolina Arizona game, and then when I came back, right as I came back, the guy was finishing my car, and he put his hand up like, oh, "Whose car is this?" It was fucking perfect, perfect timing. Um, it was about the only uh, <laughs> good thing that happened during those three hours of watching that fucking game. But, um, anyways, I got to tell you, as as bad as. Um, as bad as the the feeling I had when the Patriots lost, um, the one thing that cheered me up was watching that Carolina fan fall out of the fucking stands. That was one of the funniest fucking things I've seen in a long time. He just completely he missed timed when the player was coming down. I think he I think he just ran down and he just mis- misjudged where the rail was and he just slammed into it and just went right up and over, straight up and over. I mean, if you if you put a coat rack on wheels, it would have landed lighter than this guy did. There was just no, nothing athletic about him. It was just all fucking, was it inertia? Is that the proper physics term? He just ran down. I just wish I could have heard his thoughts when he was at the tipping point, when his legs were right up, were pointing at the 12, and his head was at 6 o'clock, right as it started to come around to about 11.45. <laughs> You know he was lying to himself, hanging onto the rail, like, I got this, I got this. Ah, fuck. 
Oh, and his stupid dad jeans just shooting up in the air right from the gap. It just fucking lands on the ground. I liked when he got up, too, and then he tried to, like, climb back up in the stands, and that dude was there like, I know, buddy. Why why don't you just walk around? We don't need you falling down again. Um, I'll tell you what the funny thing is, is you know there's going to be some lawyer scaring the fuck out of the owner of that team. That emotionless maniac that they kept cutting to when he would just be sitting there like he was listening to the verdict of his own murder trial. Um, The fuck is with that guy? Is he just focused on the Super Bowl? Everybody in his luxury box is going nuts. He's got his fucking furred up uh, wife. That's when you know you got money. When your wife has a fur coat and hasn't been spray painted. You know, that's when you know that it's it, that you guys are living a level of wealth that you don't even run into commoners, do you? You know, there's always some cunt that's got to come along and, and fucking spray paint somebody's fur coat, which I've never understood. It's like the animal died and now you're just going to throw out its hide. At least it was a jacket. You know what I mean? Like if somebody came and killed me and made a jacket out of me, I, I wouldn't want you to spray paint it. You know, and then they're just going to throw it out. And then I'm just like a fucking jacket, you know, in a landfill, right? Floating in the ocean. Let the bitch walk around with it. <laughs> um, anyways, Jesus fucking Christ. I'll tell you right now, nobody's having more fun. In the National Football League. Oh, God. I was watching the game with a buddy of mine. We were just throwing out the cliches. I'll tell you, he gets he gets here. He's the first one here, and he's the last one to leave. I'll tell you right now. You give me 22 guys like that, and I could coach this day to a Super Bowl. I'll tell you right now. You have to know where you are on the field. Why would you run a five-yard route when you need six yards for a first down? I mean, that just doesn't make any sense. I'll tell you out there, they are just, they're just having fun out there. They're just having fun. That's what this game's all about. They're out there. They're loose. He's just out there slinging it. Um, anyways, and just like that, my fucking football season is over. So who do you like in the Super Bowl? I'll tell you what I don't like. Have you seen that fucking advertisement for Super Bowl 50? The 50's in gold. And for whatever reason, there's this woman standing there. Looking like the hot chick that walks in in some gumshoe movie from the fucking 1940s. She's standing there in a raincoat and high heels with like a golden umbrella. I'm telling you. It's it's over. It's fucking over. The Bills hired a... Uh, I don't know what they hired. They had a woman for some job over. It's fucking over. It's done. It's done. Those three hours where you could get away as a married guy. You could just get away for three hours. It's, it's, it's over. It's, I, I, it's going to sound like the Westminster dog show <laughs> in about seven years. You know, we had a great run. We had a great run. And now it's over, you know. But it's our own damn fault. It's our own damn fault. You know what it was? We just couldn't hide the joy we were having watching football without him. We couldn't hide the joy. And there's nothing that annoys a fucking woman like a bunch of guys going and having a good time without him. So they're in. They're dressing in pink for a fucking month. It's it's fucking it's fucking over. Uh, I wish I just knew. I just knew. I wish I knew that it was going to come to this. I would have tried to enjoy, you know, my first 37, 38 years of football. They just flew by. I would have tried to enjoy him a little bit more. Now it's over. We should make a trade. This is what we should do. We should just trade him the WNBA. Just go like, what if we just give you a league that we started? It'll be almost like a divorce where you just get it, even though you didn't do anything. Or maybe you like emotionally supported the guy or some shit or whatever the fuck you say at the court, right? You just give him the WNBA. You can be the commissioners, all the owners, the commentators, the refs. You can be everybody in the stands. We'll give you your section of Buffalo Wild Wings, you know? Just, just don't take NFL football from us. Can you, can you just not? Just, can you give us? Can you just leave us with that? Can we just have that? Oh God, maybe I'm just too old to understand it. 
Coach, can you tell us what happened there in the first half? Well, you know, we weren't getting it done. And, uh, we got to get out there, maybe uh, try to have a little, you know. I'll tell you right now, nobody's having more fun than me. I just don't know if I'm ready for that. You know? I don't know. I just, you know, I don't, I don't know. Where, where do you go now? I guess I guess the only place left is you, you, you become one of those weird old guys that plays chess in the park. You know what it is about chess? It's boring and quiet enough that they don't notice that you're over there without them, enjoying yourself. You know? That's the genius. You ever see a guy who's been married for like 50 years, like the genius of him? I swear to God, the genius of him is they fucking, they know how to have a good time without their wife noticing. So it doesn't pique her interest, right? She's fucking over in the quiet. She doesn't give a shit, right? But young guys, we're idiots. We come home with a big grin on our face talking about how awesome it was, and blah, blah. And all they hear is, this motherfucker had the nerve to go out for three hours and not miss me and not think about me. Well, we'll see about that, won't we? Um, <laughs> it's fucking over. Oh. It's over, just like the Patriots season. So who do you guys like in the um who do you guys like in the uh I'm trying to think of an activity that women do. What, what fucking group that they have that I would like to infiltrate and I for the life of me I can't think of it. You know? What do they got the the four H club? Girl scouting. Um any of those feminist groups, they'd be a funny thing to join. Join one of those fucking groups and act like you're a feminist. You just go down there and you say, like, the most ignorant, but, like, yet it's still pro-women shit. Come down there with a fucking bud tall. Yeah, I just want to say, you know, I came down here to support you broads. You know, I think it's, uh, I think it's fucked up the way the guy treats you. You know, just because you run around with a skirt and it takes you long to get ready doesn't mean you can't run the company, right? Am I right, ladies? Come on. Uh, Bill, um, we really appreciate you coming down here. We think what you're saying is positive. We just, it's just some buzzwords here that we uh, put into a spreadsheet, a uh, little pamphlet thing that we'd like you to look at. Maybe you could not say them the next meeting. Maybe take a couple of weeks off. Oh, no, no, I'm showing up every week. Wait for him to kick me out. Then I sue him for being sexist. Um, no, I'm just a grumpy old man. That's all it is. I'm a grumpy old man who wants things to stay the same. You know, do I make any money off the NFL? I don't. I do have the mute button. You got you to gotta love the mute button. Anytime they cut to the chick on the sideline, I just fucking, I hit mute. You know, just trying to, to keep it going, you know? Just for another couple more weeks. How come we can't blah, blah, blah? And then, okay, all right, Jesus Christ. I think it really comes, I don't know. What are you going to do? It's, you know, it's fucking over. It's our own goddamn faults. We just had too much fucking fun without them. So, you know, the next thing we start, <laughs> just you come home, you, 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 you tone it down. You fucking tone it down. Um, anyways, let's plow ahead here. So I still haven't even said, what is it? The uh, Super Bowl. Who do you like, Panthers or Broncos? You know? I was impressed that the Panthers fucking were kicking the shit out of Arizona and they didn't take their foot off the gas pedal this week. Um, I don't know, but the Broncos have that fucking defense. But our offensive line stinks. It doesn't stink. We're just banged up. So I don't know. I don't know how good the... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. You know what? I don't even fucking know. I'm still so fucking annoyed by that goddamn... The finality of not even that we lost because I felt Denver was the better fucking team. God damn motherfucker. All right. That's it. Plowing ahead. Oh, by the way, did I mention I saw uh, the hateful eight? Did anybody see that? Did anybody see the hateful eight? I can't remember if I talked about it. I saw it in 70 millimeter at the arc light here in, uh, in Los Angeles. Um, it had an intermission and they had an overture in the beginning. There were no coming attractions because who the fuck's going to shoot that 70 millimeter, right? 
And I absolutely fucking loved that movie. From start to finish, I loved the pacing of it. I, I loved the whole... F- I just loved... I loved it. I just... The whole fuck... It was just an experience. Like Tarantino was like, I don't give a fuck about your cell phone. How you, your, your fucking brain is all scrambled now because you're looking at an iPad screen all goddamn day long. I don't give a fuck. The movie's this long. This is the movie I wanted to make. And you can settle the fucking or leave... It was just an experience. I absolutely fucking loved that movie. Um, oh, speaking of speaking of iPads, did you see when the Patriots iPads went out? That was strange, huh? Did the Broncos go out? Isn't that weird? That's just one of those strange things. Just one of those fluke things that happened to happen. And uh, it's all good. It's all good because it happened to the Patriots. Now, had it happened the other way around, and it was in our stadium. Oh, Jesus. How many months would ESPN talk about that? You know, Versi called me today instead of former quarterback. I think it was for the Giants. I don't even know. It was saying, like, yeah, we used to take air out of the ball all the fucking time. Everybody did it. And everybody does it. Once again. And I know you guys are like, oh, Jesus, Bill, how long are you going to harp on this? Well, they talked about it for fucking eight months, you know? I think since, you know, the judge threw it out of court, I mean, it hasn't been eight months since then, has it? September, October, November, December, January. You got another three months of this shit. Um, anyways, enough of that shit. I, uh, oh, by the way, I started that, that, um, that series, Top Boy, T-O-P Boy on uh, Netflix. And uh, fucking great show. Two episodes in, enjoying it. But Jesus Christ, you got to put on the fucking subtitles. Good Lord, mumbling fast as fuck. It's almost as bad as Peaky Blinders. But Peaky Blinders, you can understand this shit was supposed to happen like 100 years ago. This shit here, as far as I can tell, is supposed to be going on right now, and I still can't understand them. I don't think they say in it enough. Um, Stamps.com, everybody. Here we go. A little advertising for this week. Um, All right, here we go. You know it would be cool, though, if there was like a female like Vince Lombardi who came in. You know what I mean? And she had the exact same, like, like demeanor. Grab, grab, grab. Nobody tackling out there. What the hell's going on? Today will be the greatest day of your life. Believe it. You know? They'll start having, <laughs> they'll have their classic sayings. All right, everybody, grab a towel, cover your dicks. Let's <laughs> let's focus on next week. Um, oh, by the way, uh, I want to thank uh, Brian Tishy for letting me be a part of the Bonzo Bash this past Friday night. Uh, I got to go down there and co-host it with him. And uh, just the amount of drummers that I saw that night, and I got to stand behind him. If there's any YouTube video, you're going to see my dumb fucking head just staring at their bass drum foot. Um, these are some of the guys that played last Friday night. Steven Perkins, James Addiction, Chad Smith from the Chili Peppers, Dave Lombardo from Dead Cross and uh, Slayer. Uh, who else? I'm going from memory. Um, oh, there's a guy, that, uh, Greg Potter from the Buddy Rich Band. Guy plays in the Buddy Rich Band and crushed a, a Zeppelin song. That's pretty much running the gamut. Simon Wright. Last time I saw Simon Wright play, I saw him on the Who Made Who tour. Uh, Robert Fuso from Skid Row. Last time I saw him, they opened for Aerosmith, New Year's Eve, 1989, December 31st at the Boston. Got it. Uh, Will Calhoun was there. Brad Whitford from Aerosmith. Carmen uh, Apice. Oh, my God. Uh, Ray Luzier from Corn Absolutely destroyed Achilles' last stand. This guy, John Hummel, I never heard of. Fucking destroyed Cashmere. Just so many fucking amazing drummers. And uh, I actually got to sit in, which is fucking hilarious. I got to sit in in between guys at that level. Uh, I played that song off of uh, the Presence album, For Your Love. And uh, I'm sorry, For Your Love, For Your Life. And uh, I want to thank uh, everyone in the Moby Dicks for helping walk me through that song. Um. <laughs> I, you know you know what it was? I fucked up a lot during the song, but I nailed the arrangement. As far as like all the changes, I was on it for that. And I find that if you do that, that 
people in the crowd don't notice that you're fucking up the fills. There was like one big fill and I fucking rimmed out on the thing. I was so fucking pissed. Um, what are you going to do? But it was, uh, it was just a fucking amazing night and uh, four hours fucking long watching these guys. And they had this Bonham fucking Vista light set, the exact same style kit that he had. Um, and if you watch the song and the song remains the same. And this, the fucking kick drum was wide open. They had nothing in there. They didn't even have a felt strip going across it. It was one of the sickest sounds I've ever heard in my life. Big 26-inch kit. They had the two timpanis to the left of the hi-hat and then the fucking gong. And it's I'm so pissed at the end of the song I didn't hit the fucking gong. How many fucking opportunities do you get to do that? And I blew it. But... Um, I just had I just had the best time doing it, and uh, then of course I'm driving home. It was down in Anaheim, and I'm driving home. And the best thing about driving home at night in LA is there's finally no traffic, and I'm fucking cruising. And uh, all of a sudden, the fucking five just comes to a grinding halt, and three four lanes merge down to one, and then are forced off of the highway into like a neighborhood. Uh, because the only time they obviously that they can fix the highways is at night. So I have empathy for these state workers out here, but um, sucked for me. And I, ju- I completely, I had like a fucking meltdown for about five minutes. And I was texting everyone that I got a number from that was on the show, telling them not to get on the five. And uh, it's fucking brutal. And once again, I just don't understand why people buy fast cars out here. Unless you have a pickup truck with a trailer and you can drive that car, you can tow the car to a racetrack. I just don't understand, you know, these fucking cars you see out here that can go like 180, 160, 200 miles an hour, some of these fucking cars. It's like, where are you doing that? I don't know. It's fucking ridiculous. I beeped at this lady today. I was probably a dick i just really i can't fucking stand people when they sit at a goddamn red light you're right behind them and then when the light turns green they put on their fucking left turn signal and then you beep at them they're like what the fuck it's like you give me a heads up give me a heads up so i could have backed off and gone around you you fucking dick now the 20 people behind me are gonna go by i'm gonna miss the fucking light now i'm on your schedule you know like that that's never happened to you you've never been the person behind that person you don't fucking remember now you're first in line you just say fuck it Sorry. Most of this shit, everything that I'm saying, women in the NFL, all of this shit, most of this shit has nothing to do with the, it has to do with the fact that my team lost, you know? So now I'm just fucking grumpy. Um, anyways. Today would be the best day of your life, but only if you win. Let's win one for the Kipper. Um, all right. Oh, hey, I'm going to be playing out live again if you guys uh, end doing stand-up. Oh, Dean Del Rey. Dean Del Rey's uh, 50th birthday. You got to come down to this at the El Rey Theater. Del Rey at the El Rey. Uh, it's going to be an unbelievable fucking lineup of uh, comedians and musicians to celebrate Dean Del Rey's 50th birthday. And, of course, my fucking internet cuts out. I finally had the fucking thing. Finally had it. I had it all fucking lined up. I was ready to read off the whole thing. And what happens? It just fucking disappears, you fucking cunt. All right. Well, this is what I know. Um, Joe Rogan's going to be doing some stand-up there. Uh, I will be on it. Chris D'Elia. Let me get to the flyer here. Let me get to the flyer. There it is. There's the flyer. All right. Brian Redband. Joe Bartnick. Rose Bowl tailgate legend Joe Bartnick. Dean Del Rey is going to be there. And uh, after we do a bunch of stand-up, uh, we're going to do some, uh, from what I heard, there's going to be all these musicians there, and they're going to play the entire Highway to Hell album. Uh, Rudy Sarzo is going to be there from uh, Ozzy Osbourne. Uh, Dave Kushner from Velvet Revolver and... The guy who does the music for F is for Family, Dave Lombardo, Tracy Guns, Gilby Clack from Guns N' Roses. It's going to be fucking sick. It's going to be a, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so come on down uh, February 2nd. You can get tickets at uh, goldenvoice.com. Um, all right. Let's, uh, let's continue on here with, with the uh, 
with the podcast. What else did I want to talk about? Is there anything, anything at all? As I, if I, as I settle into the fact that my fucking football season is over. Um, oh Jesus Christ, the Patrice O'Neill benefit. How the fuck did I almost forget that? Um, late great Patrice O'Neill. The I think this is the fourth one we've done. Um, yeah, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Yeah. This is the fourth one. It's already flying by. Um, it's sold out. There will be a few tickets released at the um, right before the show starts. There's always a few people that requested tickets, and then they don't show up. So there's a chance if you walk up, there might be uh, some tickets. It's going to be an amazing lineup. And as always, uh, other than the money that we use to uh, pay to rent out the theater, all monies go to uh, Patrice's loved ones. And it's really made an unbelievably positive effect on their lives. Um, you know, his mom has been able to get a condo and his stepdaughters is going to private school since the benefit. And um, just the quality of their lives basically stayed the same. You know, Patrice was taking care of them. So um, it's really, it's the greatest thing that I'm involved in during the course of the year. And I'm so happy that you guys step it up every year and, um, buy tickets. So I want to thank everybody who bought tickets. It means the world to me and everybody involved and all the comics that take time out of their schedule to come down there and um and perform and it's just a it's just an awesome thing and we're just going to keep doing it as long as you guys keep showing up. All right? So thank you. Thank you for that. And with that, let's get into some of the reads here for uh for this week. All right. What are we up to here? 33 minutes. All right. All right. All right. Hacky hate Hey, Bill, how are you? He says, I am not a Patriots fan. I am a diehard Bears fan. After the Patriots lost, all I saw on Facebook was people trashing Brady and bringing up Trump and Deflategate. I get it. They're on, most, they're on top most of the time, and people love to trash him or whoever is winning at life. Now let's stop giving excuses to these pansy ass fucking sports fan who spent sports fans who spend ninety percent of their fucking time talking about gossip. It all gets classified under gossip. Every hack who was who was ecstatic that the Patriots lost is an asshole. Especially the ones who will declare they could care less about sports. Congrats, you're about as cool as the guy who paints his face. The only time I talk shit about the Patriots is to remind them of 1985. Even that's pretty weak. Go Bears. Um, Yeah, but you know, if you're on top, you got to expect that people are going to give you shit. Um, The only thing I didn't like was was when the the, uh, Broncos defense, you know, oh, we're getting sick of hearing about Tom Brady. It's like, well, then win a fucking Super Bowl. Win four of them and they'll talk about you. The Patriots never talk shit about the Broncos. They never said that they were better than the Broncos. And I also love, too, it's just like, you know, they were favorites. They were favorites. Like, the Patriots made themselves favorites. The, you know what's really overrated is is being a favorite or being an underdog it has nothing to do with your team. It has to do with the fucking dope in the Buffalo Wild Wings who's betting on games. All right? What Vegas tries to do is they try to get money on both sides of the ball. So they try to pick a number, all right, that's going to entice people to go 50-50. That's why the line changes during the course of the week. Did one team get better or another team get get worse? I mean, if there's an injury, yes. But generally speaking, no. What happens is, is there's too much money going to one side, so they need to entice people to come back the other side. Because if, if you know, the... You can't have like 90% of the money on one side of the ball that could f- completely fuck over the gambling ring or the, uh, they, they don't like those odds. And because ties lose, that's enough to tip it in their fucking favor. That's basically what goes on, which is why, you know, if you look back in 07, when the Patriots beat the Giants the last game of the year and the Giants put up like fucking 33 or 34 points and we only won by like three or something, that's why like a month later, we were still 14 point favorites. It had no, oh, the Patriots are overhyped. They weren't overhyped. What happened was the Super Bowl brings out people who don't know shit about football. All right? It brings out 
the fucking ladies. It brings out all, you know, there's nothing worse than a Super Bowl party if you give a shit about football. If you really like the Super Bowl, if you really like football, if you're really a football fan, you watch it alone or you watch it with like two or three other people that keep their fucking mouth shut, right? Um, but what happens is during the Super Bowl, that brings out all the fucking the novice fans that people don't even watch, and all they see is 18 and 0. Oh, fucking better. Or they know Brady. Like, they know they know Tom Brady the way I know Darth Vader. All right? I can't tell you a fucking thing about the last, like, I don't even know how many there's been since the original three. I know Vader is fucking Luke's father, and that fucking uh, Luke and Leia are brother and sister. And that they kind of had like this sexual tension and wanted to fuck each other in the beginning, which I think is a really weird thing to put into a kid's movie. Don't you? Um, maybe he didn't know that when he initially wrote it and then he just needed a good left turn when he was writing the second one. I have no fucking idea, but I think the way he tried to make it up was with those gerbils in the third one, you know, going, Whoa, what the fuck they did, you know? I know what the fuck they did. So anyway, so that's as much as I, and as much as I know about Star Wars, these people know about football. So then they come in and they go to Vegas and everybody goes in and thinks that they're fucking Sean Connery and James Bond, right? They, you know, they fucking go down there and they got some, I'm in Vegas suit on their wife's wearing some fucking, you know, sparkly number and everybody's out there, you know, stepping outside of themselves and it's like, I want to gamble. I want to get in the action. Who's playing? I don't know who that other team is. I know who Tom Brady is. Let me uh let me put a hundred bucks on his on the cleft of his fucking chin. And that's how the line goes from what it should be, about three, four points to all the way up to fourteen. That's what the fuck happens. All right. And that was for everybody who doesn't fucking gamble. Okay? All right, Bill. Enough already. We get it. Your team lost, and you're fucking, you're in a cunty mood. Um, thank God that guy fell out of the stands. He didn't even look that drunk. I just loved his fucking gap jeans, just fucking straight up in the air. All right, next question here. Um, oh, by the way, if you'd like to donate to this podcast, um, all you got to do is just go to, uh, next time you go to Amazon, if the next time you're going to buy something on that, uh, just go to my website, billbird.com. Click on the podcast page, and then you just click on the Amazon link. It just takes you there. It doesn't cost you any extra money. Um, you might, you know, later on in life, if your index finger wears out, you might think like, you know what, if I didn't do those extra two clicks with my index finger, uh, maybe I would have had another 10 minutes of joy and no fucking constant pain in my index finger. Other than that, there's really nothing. I even do it. I even go when I go to Amazon. Well, why wouldn't I? I guess I get the money, right? You know what I did? I went on there and I fixed my fucking cooler. I don't know what the fuck happened to my cooler this year at the Rose Bowl. It's been to every Rose Bowl that I've been to, and I've been to eight of them at this point, and I never had a fucking problem. And at some point, like my cooler, basically, it opens up to a point. You know, the hinges stop it from opening, and then there's a strap to keep it from going any further. And I don't know what happened. Um... Because I, I fucking passed out like at like 10 o'clock in the morning. So, and I didn't even notice that my cooler was fucked up. But at the end of the night, when I got my cooler back, the uh, it had basically been decapitated. The strap was busted and the hinges were busted. And I was like, what the fuck? What happened? You know, it's like the Hulk opened the thing up or something. It's just like, just open it a little. It's fine. But then I was thinking, well, when I fell down as I was drunk, did I land on the cooler? And it's like, no, I, w- I wouldn't notice that. I landed flat on my... B- I landed like that fucking guy <laughs> when he fell out of the stands. That's how I fell. I fell on the grass. Do you realize I was on a fairway, a straight fairway golf course, and I lost my balance and fell down? That's how fucking drunk I was. And you know what? It was fucking great. Um, so anyways, I went to... Uh... Oh, actually, I didn't go to Amazon. I just looked up Igloo um, Cooler Repair Kit. And they got like, there's two different kinds of hinges and I accidentally ordered two of them and I only need one of them. So I have an extra repair kit and I know, you know, the odds and they, they send you like three sets of hinges. You know, if you have like the, the giant one, you know, the person who kills his wife and doesn't want anybody to know and just says she's on vacation and he cuts her up. Like they have that size hinge for that cooler. And then they just got, you know, the happy drunk that falls down on new year's day, you know? So they come with three sets of hinges for each. So I have an entire extra one. So anybody out there 
who has like a, a cooler that needs to be replaced. It comes with everything, even like the drain, little drain hole fucking spout thing. It's got that. Um, the strap does come separately. I don't have an extra strap, but I have an extra uh, repair kit. So if anybody wants it, send us an email with an address and I'll send it out to you. Because what, what else am I going to do with it? I'm not going to throw it out. And someday if I ever move, um, you know, I got to pack up something that I, I don't even fucking need. So there you go. Oh, by the way, uh, I'm still in the running here to maybe get this drum room made slash podcast room in the back of my garage. Um, as always, there's major, major fucking structural issues, but, um, I don't know. It's just, I, I gotta, I gotta sure up that part of the house, but there's, there's all these, there's all these fucking issues that I can't even talk about because, you know, I'm getting a permit. I'm doing all of that fucking shit. And I know some of you are like, well, you don't need a fucking permit if, uh, if you're building within the structure, if you're not adding any square footage, blah, 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 blah. I know all that shit, but like, I just, you know, anytime you start hammering in your fucking garage, your neighbors hear it, they fucking rat you out. I just don't need the fucking headache. So I'm doing my due diligence and it's taking a long time, but, um, I'm going to, I'm going to make this, I'm going to make this fucking happen. And I have a 71 Ludwig green sparkle, all bottom sized drums. And I'm going to make sure that they fucking fit in there. And I'm going to fucking, I don't give a shit. What do I care? Right. You know, the oceans are all fished out. The government takes all your fucking money. You know, I don't give a fuck. I'm going all out with this thing. This thing, I'm literally going to be able to, I'm going to tell this guy if, if I'm able to do this, and I'm not going to have a fucking problem legally and I can build the fucking thing I want to build. I'm literally going to be able to play at two o'clock in the fucking morning and no one's even going to hear it. They might, it might sound like a stereo's on really low, um, but I'd never be a douche enough to play then, um, at least sober. That'll be great then, right? Anytime I'm bugging my wife, I can just walk out the back door, go into my garage, sit down and put on a Zeppelin album. Guns N' Roses, fucking uh, all my fucking shit I listened to when I was growing up. Queens of the Stone Age, you know. Uh, what, the, what what else do you fucking need? Oh, you know what else I need. I need a bar out there, right? Flat screen TV. You know what's funny about a man cave? When somebody really goes throws down in their fucking man cave, all I hear is I am not happily married. And what you're doing is you're building a mini version of what your life would look like if you weren't, what your house would look like if you weren't married. Like after you show them the house with all the throw pillows and all the fucking potpourri and all that shit, you bring your buddy out to the garage and you're just like, yeah, if I wasn't married, like this is what it would look like. (laughs) But you know what's funny about that? I'm old enough to know that if your house did look like that, the I, I see the loneliness in it because the bottom line is a man cave. What it is, is like what you're building is what you wish you had. You wish you could afford when you were fucking 22 years old. That's basically it. And the problem is, is if you do it honestly, if you actually work your balls off, you know, and you don't steal from anybody or any of that fucking shit. It's going to take you to you're about 50. Unless you're one of these fucking nerds in Silicon Valley that comes up with an app or some shit. You know, you really don't get paid until you get close to 50. That's just how it is. You know, it's just how it is. Except for Cam Newton. He's getting paid around. I'll tell you right now, nobody's having more fun than that guy. If you look up fun in the dictionary. Um, anyways, I... um. Yeah, I'm going to fucking make a little podcast thing. I mean, I don't have a lot of room, but uh, I'm going to I'm going to fucking do it upright. And, uh, you know, getting back and taking lessons again dude. the shit that I'm actually paying attention to now that I never paid attention to how I hold on to the sticks, where I'm hitting the snare drum, my balance, all of that shit. It used to be all about going on YouTube, seeing some guy do one of those gospel chop fucking licks and I'm going to go down here and fucking just do this for fucking nine days in a row and then i'll be able to do that you know pull this fill off next time i walk into guitar center and uh and then meanwhile all my other playing sucked and uh i've just had this total epiphany 
about all of it. And uh, it's funny. I'm not doing nearly as much as I used to do, but I think I'm playing better than I ever played. And uh, I don't know. It's fucking exciting. Gives me a reason to get up in the morning, you know? So anyways, let's move on to the next question here. Uh, Oh, my God. Did I tell you guys how I butchered that fucking pork chop meal that I made? Ugh, still sick over that. Ugh. I'm like, I'm eating pork chops again this week because I have to redeem myself. All right. So the hacky hate thing. Yeah, that just kind of comes with winning games or whatever. Um, all right. No Asian diversity at the Oscars. Bill, hello from Canada. Would love to hear what your take is on why no one is complaining about the lack of Asians at the Oscars. Oh, you motherfucker. That's the bit I was going to do. That was the bit I was going to do. Yeah, that's. It's as he goes, as an Asian, I don't care because, A, I suspect we aren't producing good enough shit not to. Not oh wait, we're not producing good enough shit. Not because we're Asian. B Asians aren't getting sweet rolls because I'm not profitable. They aren't going to cast an Asian (parentheses) or black or female actor that would make more money out of some white conspiracy. Dude, you had like fucking two sets of parentheses in there. Asians aren't getting sweet rolls because it's not profitable. They aren't going. They they aren't going to not cast an Asian or black or female actor that, oh, I see what you're saying. They're not, they aren't going to not cast an Asian actor that would make more money out of some white conspiracy. So you're saying if they, if they would make them money, then they would see who cares if you don't like how the Oscars define the best, whatever, I don't get why. And then that's the end of it. I see what you're saying. Well, yeah, you're looking at it from a very, uh, like, money. Like, I think that's a lot of times. Sometimes, you know, it looks like it's racism. A lot of times it's just money. But what I think American cinema is finally realizing is that there's a whole bunch of other people in the world that they can actually get money from if they gave a fuck to make a movie that would appeal to them. And the only think, reason why I think they're doing that is because everybody stole movies and it's so hard to make money off of them now and there's such a big fucking risk because what happened to the music business has happened slash is happening to the movie business right now, which is why there's really no more, like t- from like $20 million to like $70 million, they don't make movies in that budget anymore. They just don't. It's either like some fucking $100 million Star Wars action hero movie or it's like fucking below $10 million, it seems, Um, all the way down to like a hundred grand, like indie sort of, you know, micro budget fucking thing. Um, So, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's no Asians there either. Where's the outcry for that? Well, people don't people give a fuck about themselves. That's the one thing that I can say about people in general straight across the board you know which is why i guess white people need because they're running shit quote running shit you know what i mean like they're all cooperating with one another because there's white people in those positions they need to take the time to actually give a fuck about other stuff because i gotta be honest with you i thought that kid that played easy e in uh straight out of compton he should have gotten nominated he was he was the fucking shit in that movie I should know that actor's name. He was, you know what? God damn it. Why don't I step outside my whiteness? <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set the example here right now. And I'll tell you right now, there's nobody having more fun right now going on the internet than this guy. You look up fun on the internet, there'll be a picture of me, Easy e actor. Um, Eric Lynn Wright, is there? Jason Mitchell on playing Easy e that fucking guy was, the, he should have got something. Did he even get a Golden Globe? Did he get nominated for that? Um, that was one of those movies that I actually didn't even want to see. There was some line that, what's his face, uh, uh, Giamatti said. You know what I mean? You can't treat him like that! Like that, that when he yelled, whatever the fuck he yelled, I was like, oh, Jesus Christ, this, this looks really heavy-handed. You know what I mean? And then they always have to have the... Uh, you know, they always have to have the white white angel 
in those movies when they show racism. So then white people will go so they can lie to themselves and be like, yeah, if I was there, that's the white guy I would be. I'd be the angel white guy. I wouldn't be the, the, uh, you know, the racist guy. Um, yeah, no, it's a very, it's a very interesting, the whole fucking thing is, is really, uh, interesting. I don't know. I have no idea. I mean, I think you shouldn't just say, look, black actors should be nominated. You should fucking then back it up. You know what I mean? And give shout outs to people that fucking deserve it. You should be like Jason Mitchell playing Easy E straight out of comp. Now, who the fuck is going to say he shouldn't have got something? Um, or maybe they did do that. I got to be honest with you. I don't, I don't really pay attention to award shows. I fucking can't stand them. Um, they're horrific. They're fucking horrific. They're boring as hell. There's usually one moment that's worth fucking watching. And at that, it, with the internet, you're not going to miss it. They're just going to show it to you. So why would you waste four hours of your life watching this shit? Like for the Golden Globes, the, the, the moment of the night was Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey stole that even. That fucking speech was hilarious. And from what I've heard um, from people out here, he just winged that thing. That's how fucking funny that guy is. Um, and watching him do that and the brutal honesty of it really made me wish I could still watch him do stand up, to be honest with you. Um, all right, here we go. To your health, good sir. Bill, I've heard you discuss many topics with, with yourself on the podcast about health and longevity. Uh, of the major topics, i.e., food and exercise, I would have to suggest considering another area to focus on breathing. Oh, Jesus. I got to work on this too? Breathing is huge. How you breathe and the types of breaths you take during the day to really change your body for the better. I just literally thought about breathing and got more relaxed. This is this yoga shit that I try to slow my brain down for. Conscious breathing. Conscious breathing. Are you going to plug your book in the middle of this? You motherfucker. You know what? You you got me. You suckered me in. Uh, But I'm going to read it like Deep Thoughts by Jack Handy. Here we go. Conscious breathing is a book and a great place to start. Also, a man by the name of Wim Hof is doing amazing things and has been on Joe Rogan's podcast. You may not have three hours to listen to it, but if you run into Joe, I'm sure he can give you the breakdown. Thanks for the free laughs. Um, no, I'll listen to anybody that's on Rogan's podcast. Joe Rogan's podcast, the fastest fucking three hours you're ever going to spend. If you're ever, ever lucky enough to be a fucking guest, you're going to be like, ah, I've been here like 40 minutes. And then all of a sudden you're like, so how the fuck is it like seven o'clock at night? Like I, I missed, uh, I missed my meal. Um, well, I'll get, I'll give it a chance. I'll give it a try. I know. I, I definitely need to fucking stress less. And, uh, that's always like one of my goals. I haven't been drinking this year though. The day after the Rose Bowl is the last time I, I boozed, um, I had one gulp of wine after I made this really rich dinner in my stomach. I needed to settle it. So I, my wife was drinking some wine. I just took a gulp of that. And then the last three nights in a row, I'm getting rid of these Rose Bowl beers. I just drink like one light beer. I just have one and then I'm, then I'm done. And it just kind of makes me sleepy. But I'm, I'm just trying to free up some room in the fridge. Because every year at the end of the Rose Bowl, I get stuck with all the extra beers and like fucking... 15 cans of half-used mustard. Um, <laughs> I get all the condiments in a broken cooler. All right, trash in the ocean. Hey, Bill, I know you talk about this all the time on your podcast, but believe it or not, there are people who do not believe our trash uh, being dumped in the ocean is a problem. Well, there's always going to be those people. There's also people that thought the fucking world was flat well, I guess I would have thought the world was flat if I lived back then. People didn't think that we were effect, we were having an effect on the climate. You know, all the fucking trees that we've cut down, that alone. You know what I mean? It's um, All right, anyways. He says, there was another scientific study done, if you believe in that kind of thing, that states plastics will outweigh fish in the ocean by 2050. Yeah, I saw that. I don't think that that's going to happen because I have a feeling that Mother Nature has had enough with us and will, you know, and they keep predicting by 2090, the population will more than fucking quintuple 
I think that, you know, we're already long past the tipping point. Scientists have said we're past the point where we can even fix this fucking thing. So I, this is like when you can't do your homework. At some point, you're like, Ma! And she comes down and helps you out. I think Mother Nature is going to do that. And uh, she's an old school mom, and she's going to slap the shit out of us. Um, but you don't need to listen to me say this. Just listen to George Carlin. He'll tell you all about it. Um, all right. He said, I guess these assholes assume they'll be dead by then and don't give a shit. Long time listener here. Just saw you in Indy back in October. I can assure you we aren't all ignorant KKK asshole or Jim Irsay fans. You know, I, you know, I just say that just to fuck with you. Jesus Christ, I grew up outside of Boston. Half the people in the clan would go there and be like, all right, hey, take it easy. You know, easy. I understand, but easy. All right, thanks and go fuck yourself. And then they sent me the uh, the unbelievably depressing link, which I don't I don't even go to them anymore. I don't even go to them anymore because all they do is depress me. All right, average amount of waste produced by humans. Jesus Christ, we're just staring into this. Hey, Bill, I'm from Columbia and love your podcast and your stand up comedy. Hey, that's fucking great. Oh, you're from Columbia. I thought you were down there listening. Um, but whatever you're from there, right? You live there at some point. You still listen to the podcast. It's still cool. Uh, he goes, um, the, or she goes, I don't know who the fuck wrote this. He goes, the other day I was wondering how much poop is produced by humans on a daily basis. And I did a little research on the internet and some calculations, which I would like to share with you and your audience. Okay. According to the world fact book, the world population consists of 7,174,611, wait a minute, 7,174,611,584 what, what, people, and the average human being weighs around 62 kilograms. Oh, you motherfucker. I, I want to know what that is in pounds. I, I, I got I to switch that over. I want to see where the fuck I'm at. Wait, what did you just say? 62 what do you guys think? The average person, I would say the average person weighs about a hundred, oh, a lot of starving people. I'll, I'll go 162 pounds. What do you, what do you say here? All right, 62 in LBS. All right. That's equal to 136 pounds. Holy shit. God damn it, there's a lot of small or starving people in the world. All right, now the average, that means I am right now, I'm like 40 pounds over the average. And the average human being, all right. Now the daily average for stool, gross, is one ounce per 12 pounds of body weight, which means the average person poops 11.39 ounces. Therefore, each day the planet receives... 2,295,000 2,295,876 metric tons of shit. But since the average stool is 75% water, dude, this is gross. It would be safe to say that humans produce 1,721,907 metric tons of poop every day. Jesus Christ, you're really taking all the fun out of this podcast. To put this in perspective, I think you put it into perspective, but he's going to keep going. The Empire State Building weighs 350,000 tons. So human beings pupe the equivalent of five giant turds the size of the Empire State Building. If we add farts to the equation, this fucking dude is all in. The average person farts 17 times a day. That's it. Try eating a salad. Fucking double your numbers. You break Dan Marino's record. Times seventeen times a day producing a litter a liter of fart in, in total. A litter? L I T T E R? That's a litter of fart in total, which gives a new meaning to a breathing fresh air. I have included the links where I got the information at the end of this email and when you think about it on top of eating our own rollerblades we're eating our own shit by the way everything you read or hear about Colombia is true (laughs) go have a meaningful experience with yourself does that mean go 
Oh, that means go fuck yourself. Ah, oh, this guy's a clever son of a bitch. Um, Jesus Christ. Well, you know what? Hey, how, how about I end the podcast with what I promised to do last week, which is I was going to start reading segments from the Bible. Now, granted, I don't own a Bible. All right? Let's start with John 3.16 because I'm a sports fan. John 3.16... He said it unto you with. All right. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only, his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, perish, but have eternal life. Well, that's straightforward. He let his kid die. So as long as you believe that that happened, you will not die. You will have eternal life. You will live forever. Think about that. Forever. You know, you ever been at the DMV? Just imagine that, except it never ends. Right? What the fuck would you do forever? There's no way that that's fucking true. You know, movies don't go on forever. Planets don't go on forever. Or livable planets don't go on forever. Oh, fuck this. This is why I don't read the Bible. I just don't, I don't fucking get it. All right, let's, 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 uh, let's just look up Bible passages. B-I-B-L-E. It'd be funny if this actually got me back to going to church. I still love going to church. You know what I mean? I still like going. You know? Keep in mind that Jesus Christ has died for us and is risen from the dead. All right. Encouraging Bible verses. Hope Bible Verses, Bible Verses by Friendships Bible Verses. Let's give hope. Encouraging. Well, where the fuck is it? Ah, I just wanted to open it like the phone book. The Bible. I'm going to look up the Bible, please. Read the Bible. WWW, a free Bible on your phone. I don't want it. I want it on my fucking screen. I want a hamburger. No, a cheeseburger. Official Kim James Bible. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Bring what? Commit thy way unto the Lord. All right, so walk in the general direction of the Lord. Trust also in him. Well, if I'm walking towards him, aren't I? Isn't that trusting him? What do you think? I'm creeping up on him? Hey, man, just making sure everything's cool. I'm walking your way. But, you know, just wave your white flag. Don't open a trap door when I get there, dude. And he shall bring it to pass. Genesis. Oh, I remember reading this. It, like, makes sense for, like, three fucking sentences. And then you're just like, what? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, period. The deep what? And the Spirit of God moved upon, that's like when they go, you know, they got to eat up some clock. Darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. I thought there wasn't any. thought there wasn't any water, there wasn't anything. How was there water for his face to be on? And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Let there be sound. There was sound. Is this Bon Scott? God said, let there be light. And there was light. Well, what was he doing before that? He was just sitting in the darkness all by himself. Just one day he's laying there going, "Ah, I'm going to make some shit. And God saw the light. That it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light. Day. It's like Cam Newton. Everything's about the same guy. I'll tell you right now, nobody's having more fun than God making earth. He's like a kid in a candy store that doesn't exist and kids don't exist because he hasn't made it yet. Ah, oh, fuck this Genesis. Let's look up Job. Let's see what old Job had to say. Where the fuck is he? Well, let's read Titus. That's the name of a comic I know. How about that? All right, Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect, 
and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness. I feel like somebody's trying to sell me a car. That was all one sentence. In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Dude, this is like, like God called everything, you know, before you even born and all that. But hath in due times manifested his word. You know what? I thought this would be a funny bit. This is just fucking annoying. But hath in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. It just, it just goes in circles. To Titus, my own son after the common faith. He had another kid. He had Jesus, then he had Titus. Grace, mercy, and peace. Who were they? Was Grace, Grace, did, was she another virgin? How many times is he going to use this virgin thing? He banged him. Right? He had Jesus with Mary, and then Grace was his fucking side piece, and he had Titus. Right? For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, and orders elders in every city, as I appointed thee. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly. It's not a sentence. Oh, maybe it was back then. You know what? If I get judged someday, you know, and, and God standing there and being like, I just be like, dude, I, you know, I tried to get through, I tried to get through the book. I, I don't know what to tell you. As far as I can, it's a bunch of fragments. All right. They're not complete thoughts. You know, you can't write, just because you put a period at the end of it doesn't make it a sentence. Right? All right, that's the podcast for this week. Once again, congratulations to the Broncos. Congratulations to the lady who got a job. I'm going to end this positive. Congratulations to the lady who got the job there. with The Buffalo Bills. I'm sure you're going to do a great job. I'm just a grumpy old fucking man whose team lost. All right? Congratulations to the Panthers. Um, I look forward to seeing Cam Newton you know, play against Peyton Manning. It's going to be great. I love that he called him the sheriff. Um, I thought that was cool. You know, the best of the old versus the best of the new. So I'm an old fucker. So I'm going to have to root. I got to root for uh, the Denver Broncos, the AFC, and Peyton Manning, um, even though I love the Panthers and I love the way they fucking play and their defense is the shit. And um, I don't know. I just hope it's a good game. I hope the Panthers, if they're going to win, or the Broncos. I just don't want anybody beating the fuck out of anybody, right? But I will tell you, as always, I will be watching it by myself, okay? I'm not going to... I might go to a Super Bowl party because my team's out of it, but I, I don't think so. I want to see Peyton's last game, and I hope he goes out like Elway, and uh, I'm going to do what I always do, all right? I'm going to tape the game. You let it go for a good 90 minutes. As I mentioned, you shut your phone off, You get the grill going, you crack a couple of beers, you know, you make yourself a burger or two, you invite a couple of friends over, and then you go, all right, let's sit down and watch it. And you blow through all the fucking beginning and the home of the brave, right? Boom, kick off. And here we go. Blow through all the fucking commercials. Fast forward through Beyonce lip syncing during halftime. You'll get caught up halfway through the third fucking quarter. And, uh, And if there were any cool commercials that you missed... You have them recorded, but someone's going to put them up online anyways. You're not going to miss a fucking thing. And you can watch the Super Bowl in about, I don't know, you can watch it in about two two hours and 20 minutes, two two and a half hours. It's fucking tremendous. All right? God bless you guys. Yet, go fuck yourselves. And I'll check in on you on Thursday. All right. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Anything Better podcast show, NFL edition for championship week. We are down to the final four. I'm happy to be back. I know some of you missed me. I feel better this week. I'm not shitting my brains out and throwing up all over the place. So Still didn't miss a show. Still did not miss a show. You had food poisoning, and he still... Brought himself onto the stage, old school. <laughs> it took a lot. It took a lot, but I did it. Um, but uh, I went two and two last week. I don't know what. What did, I? I didn't know anything about you guys because I was. We sick. picked the exact opposite games, and we both went two and two. Okay. We went head to head. Like everything that I said is like Paul's going the other way. Paul's going the other way. <laughs> and I was saying I want a four and zero oh and an zero oh and four. I don't want two and two. 
And that's we exactly both, what we got. We both got two and two. I mean, those people in Buffalo, if they have to deal with another wide right. Oh, you, you know what? Fuck them. I'm so sick of everybody acting like they're the, oh, my God, it's got to be so fucking hard. Paul, nobody chants anything at them. Nobody. What do you mean? The fucking Rangers, my whole time growing up, 1940, just rubbing it in your face in some regular season fucking game. They chanted 1918 at the fucking Red Sox. Dude, look at the Lions. The Lions went 0-16, haven't sniffed a fucking championship since the 1950s. Uh, and I got to be honest with you too, Paul, okay? I just want to say this, okay? I have empathy for him and everything like that, but this whole fucking thing, uh, is it the worst thing ever to be a Buffalo Bills fan? Nobody is giving them shit. Yeah, so they should scream. Are you saying that they should start chanting wide right when they're on the road? <laughs> I mean, it's you would think they would, but they don't. <laughs> they, Dude, I, do you know what it is, Paul? I feel bad for him. But when I saw that man in the crowd who was like, look, he was in his late twenties, early thirties. Just he broke down crying. Oh, dude, I know. I mean, that was fucking pathetic, Paul. The shit that I saw as a fucking Red Sox fan, as a Patriots fan, as a Bruins fan growing up. Yeah. You didn't break down and cry. Now, listen, we were walled off emotionally, but there has been an overcorrection in the, the American male. The fact that that guy could start pulling his hat down and openly sobbing in public with a pom-pom hat on is just like that. That's I mean, that's the kind of thing that gets your country invaded. I'm, I'm just saying. I, I don't I will never understand, although I, I did cry one time in 1994 when we lost game seven to the Houston Rockets. But I was drunk and I was a kid, you know, so it's like and you were like 16. I was hammered. I was like 15 or 16. You know, it was a great Knicks run. And I was just I didn't cry. I was like, Ugh, but I was like fucking dicks like shit like that. You, you know? got emotional. You get emotional, but that guy, you're right. Dude, that I didn't cry emotional. game six. I didn't cry. Why? All the fucking Patriots losses, I didn't cry. Couldn't beat the fucking goddamn Canadians forever. Anytime we went in that fucking building, they'd always put on a power play. It was fucking annoying. I didn't cry. Cry. Dude, the guy was like, oh, ha, ha, ha. what the fuck? That's Pull it nuts. together. Oh, pull it together. That, what I, are you going to do when, 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 you, when there's a fucking flood? The last time I saw crying like that was when we saw that guy from Argentina in the World Cup. That's the thing. That's the thing. Like the, the they're Cup, fucking I'll give you a little better. I'll give you a little leeway. I'll give you a little leash with the World Cup. It's every four years. Your country might have never. NFL, you're coming back next year. What do you break it down for? What it's parody. Break... Relax. It's... It was. It was. It was a bad look. And I also I forgive an athlete for crying. That's your dream. You yes. were that close. I yes. get it. Yeah. I get that. I don't have a fucking problem with an athlete. But if you're in the fucking stands, Paul, just some regular guy putting his sweatpants on one fucking oversized leg after another, I don't want to watch you fucking. <laughs> and I don't judge Buffalo Bill fans off of that one fucking guy. I no, don't. You know, no, you know what I, Bill, you know what I just thought of? How funny would it be <laughs> if they got beaten down with wide right chance so much that every time a Buffalo guy missed, it always just went hard left? <laughs> Because he overcompensated. <laughs> dude, I went to that Buffalo Bills game. I had a Patriots hat on. Yeah. And that dude waited till I had my dick out pissing. And he pushed me from behind. With Fuck you. all this because you lost. All of a sudden, you're salt of the earth people. They're just as big a cunts as anybody you find in New York or uh, real uh, or Massachusetts. Real New York or Massachusetts. Because they don't live in real New York. All right. They're basically Canadian. I wanted them to go, man. I, I really did. I was rooting him. for him. I but I, but here's the thing, too. That fucking wide right is not the reason why they lost that game. They needed right. to bring their A game. And they didn't bring their A game. It's true. They didn't it's convert. True. And they fuck. How many drop passes did they have? How many times did Tony Romo go? Yeah, she sh probably should have had that. Well, how about that bomb? That absolute bomb. I can't remember the last time I saw a, b a ball that high and far. And then Diggs, it went in through Diggs' thing. I mean, dude, you catch that game. Got to catch that. Catch that Who ball. catches that ball? Who catches that? Jerry Rice. Randy Moss. Oh, I said to Randy Luke, catches I said, that. I said, you know who catches that bomb? And he goes, I know, Dad. Randy Moss. Because <laughs> he knows how much I love him. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jerry Rice. Vince catches. Swan would have caught it. John Stallworth would have caught it. Yeah. Yeah. Drew Absolutely. Pearson catches that ball. You got to catch that fucking ball. Got to catch that bomb. And then you're on the And 10. it's another thing, too. Even if that kid made the field goal, they, 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 they were going to, Chiefs were going to go right down the fucking field and they were going to score like they did. Who's That's their running back? 
That's a who just oh, runs oh, like oh, fucking uh, Roger Craig. Isaiah Pacheco, man. The kids, I mean, not Isaiah. Yeah, Pacheco. Great. Great. Knees high, fucking elbows, just tearing through their line. He reminded me of Ahmad Bradshaw and the Giants. Like, that's just the guys that just run hard and run with the purpose. Um, Nothing he did reminded me of the Giants running game, but continue. No, well, you don't know Ahmad Bradshaw, man. That was the guy. Um, when? Uh, 2006 to 2009. Um, but We lost a Super Bowl to you then. I don't remember that guy. Uh, number 44. I remember your defense. I remember Eli Manning. Yeah. No, I dude. wasn't thinking, oh, God, not not fucking Ahmad Brad Bradshaw. I saw Ahmad Bradshaw at, a, at that party Willis Whalen hooked us up with, and I walked up to him. He was just sitting there. I go, dude, you ran so hard for us. Thanks so much. And he was just so – he was like – I was like, you know, you know me. I love the athletes, but you make a good point, Bill. <laughs> White make, leather and athletes. You, 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 uh, you make a good point, Bill. The Kansas City Chiefs scored on the first seven drives of the fucking game. Where's the defense? Where's the defense? First seven yeah, drives. The Bills, the Bills are still not ready for prime time. They had no business winning that fucking game the way that they played, and they're going to blame this stupid fucking kicker, Sass, right? Bass. And he's going to walk around, laces out for the rest of his fucking life. And everybody's going to forget all those drop passes. They're going to forget how they just fucking went right down the field and scored on him. Yeah. Get a stop. All right. You missed a field goal. Get a stop. Three and out. Get a fucking stop. They went right down the field, Paul, like butter on Thanksgiving. Giving the kid death threats. What the fuck are you doing? Threatening a kid's life. Assuming yeah. you're going to win the coin toss. Assuming Don't punch you're your dad toss. like you really want to. Uh, uh, yeah. So And then he makes the kick. You assume you're going to get the coin toss. You assume you're going to get the ball, get a touchdown and win. Totally disregarding everything that Kansas City Chiefs could do. You, it's it's a it's a rough one. Oh, it was a rough one, you know? Yeah, they scored like 70 points the last time they won the playoffs with the, the, the Chiefs, and they still lost like 71-70. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not doing this. I'm not what? doing I'm not gonna fucking glorify a fan base because they don't fucking win. Those guys are just as big a cunts as any other fan base. All right. Pushing a man in his back when he has his dick out. I mean, come on, Paul. I mean, where where the Oh, it got personal. I think there any other Bills fan going, hey, hey, well, let him finish pissing first. And I was like in my forties. I was an old fucking man taking a whiz. Trying to hope the fucking urine went by my swollen prostate, and this guy pushes me in the back like he plays for the fucking Penguins. You were in a vulnerable position, man. And he took advantage of it. He took advantage of a vulnerable position. You don't touch a man with his dicks in his hand. You just don't. You just don't. And you I know what's fucked up? You shouldn't have to tell people that, but evidently you have to tell the people of Buffalo that. Dude, if a mob guy came to put a hit on you and kill you, he would be like, all right, Zippo, finish up. <laughs> Finish up. Go, go ahead, finish up. <laughs> Look, you hungry? You want something to drink? <laughs> All right. Uh, the, the other game, the other game was a weird one because the Texans are in the game at halftime, 10-10. I'm going, oh, shit. And then, boom, Buff Baltimore happened. That's the one that I lost. You won that one. You called that one. Yeah, I thought, basically, I thought the Texans and Green Bay had their game last uh, two weeks ago in the Super Far out, fucking keep on trucking wild card weekend that oh, the NFL had. Weekend. Yeah, super duper. Super duper, yeah. fragilistic fucking <laughs> wild <laughs> card <laughs> weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's uh, enough people that's like fucking the NHL. It's like half the fucking league was playing that weekend. Not the Patriots, but they were, right? And uh, I thought that that was okay. That was, they had great games. Against teams that can't win wild card weekend, they're going to turn into pumpkins. And I just thought the uh, Texans were young, and I thought Green Bay was the same thing. And I, I believe sort of in the 49ers. 49ers, man, they're a weird team, dude. They, they kind of crowned Brock Purdy like he's this fucking grizzled vet. And as far as I hear with that guy, all they're doing is just like, yeah, he's fucking, he throws the ball before the guy even makes the cut. We've already talked about that. That's how you play quarterback. You have to do that at the college level or to get knocked down. Um, Unless you play for Yale. Yeah, and going, going back to the Texans, that's a great year for them. Rookie quarterback, inexperienced coach. They get to that round. They get to the divisional round. It's a great year for the Texans, but you're not going to beat an experienced Baltimore team with John Harbaugh and Jackson. I just like the points. I like the nine and a half. 
but they fucking put it on them. Um, I guess we'll make some picks, Bill. <coughs> All we, right. are in cha- we are in championship weekend. We have the Detroit Lions and the 49ers, and we have the Ravens and uh, the Chiefs in Baltimore. What are, the, what are the spreads here? Let's go, Andrew. What are the, what are the current bet MGM lines here? Three and a half. Three Oof, and a half. That's a. I'll tell you this right now, Paul. I, the Chiefs getting points in the fucking playoffs. I believe in the Chiefs. I believe in Patrick Mahomes. I believe in Andy Reid. Until somebody shows me that I shouldn't, those fucking guys don't let passes go through their hands. Those guys, you know when they do that, Paul? They do it in November when it doesn't fucking matter. But come January, these guys just get fucking locked in. Um, yeah, yeah. But I'll tell you I'm one thing. I'm not saying they're going to win the fucking game, but they're going to cover three and a half. I, I think the Ravens defense at home, I think Ravens are different at home. I think it's going to be a monster game. The three and a half is perfect. It's so perfect. I hate the point five. I hate if the it's, point If it's five. three, I take the Ravens. If it's three and a half, I got the Chiefs. I just think it's going to be a close game and someone's going to go into the prevent little fucking garbage time backdoor cover. That's how I see it, Paul. I agree with you 100%. I think the Ravens are going to win the game by three or two. Yeah. Uh, I, you know what would be cool, dude? Like, this has never happened. Two brothers winning the in the same year winning the uh, college football championship and then the Super Bowl. That would be amazing. That would be amazing. But I think Lamar Jackson's going to be a lot for um, the one thing that you learned about the That's Chiefs the thing I didn't like them. about their offense. Who? When I was watching the Ravens, as much as they put it on the Texans, so much of it was him dropping back and then taking off and running. Yeah. Now, I don't know. The Chiefs don't, don't exactly have, they don't a, have a bad run defense. defense. They don't have a great defense. I don't know. I just get like, that's like college football. Like Tim Tebow level offense. You know, I, I drop back, I look, nobody's open, and then I run for fucking eight yards. Yeah, but the one thing that is about the, the, the that they were saying about the Chiefs, and I saw it, you could see it with Buffalo, is the Chiefs don't have a good run defense. And I think running the I don't ball, think the Chiefs have had a good fucking defense during this whole time that they've been the top dog in the AFC. They've never had a lights-out fucking defense. No, defense is okay, but the, the no-run defense. I like... um. I like Baltimore to win the they game. They had Tyreek Hill. They had Kelsey. They had fucking Patrick Mahomes. Like they had all of that shit going on, and they were Actually, offense you know heavy. You just changed. I just changed my mind. I just changed my mind. Do that, Paul. You fucking. You, you've been killing it this year. Don't listen to me. No, I'm, no, no, I'm no. win some, lose some, Billy. No, no, no. I'm going against you. I. I'm okay, saying, good. I like I, that. I like Baltimore to win the game by. I think Baltimore is going to win the game by by. They should win the game by a touchdown. I'm being scared. I'm being scared because it's Mahomes can't lose. Fuck that, dude. Baltimore's better. They got a better defense. They're home. I'm taking the Ravens. And you know what I heard in that? They should win that game. They should. Not they will. They should win that game. And that's what fucking happens when people play the Chiefs. On paper, you should fucking beat them in the playoffs, and then you don't. Well, Twinkle Toes throws a fucking. <laughs> Dude, the guy floats around. <laughs> He's got a dance background, you know? Does a little soft shoe back there. <laughs> I'm expecting him after he throws to just do a Michael Jackson. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh yeah, the whole thing, the way he walks, the way he runs, the way he throws, it's just not, it's not, uh, it's not the Marlboro man back there. You saw that kid on Instagram do an impression of him? Oh, dude, it was that, You know, my two favorite was that one and then the guy doing uh, Jokic. Is it Jokic or Jokic? I'm not an NBA guy. The guy in Denver. Oh, yo, it's, it's Jokic, yeah. Yeah, because they call him Joker, so I always end up fucking it up. Jokic, when he was doing like the kind of, just throwing it up like that and he had his <laughs> It's like his head, neck, and shoulders run. are all like fused. Like uh, it just he just when he walks, it's just kind of like have you there's ever some good seen, ones out have there. Have you ever seen an NBA superstar champion give a fuck less about his job? No. You know what the big shame is? Jason Law had never fucking uploaded his batting stances. I saw some guy doing Reggie Jackson the other day. I just it disgusted me. Compared to Jay Lawheads. I don't know why the fuck he never put those things up. Those would have went viral. They were unbelievable. Yeah. 
They were uh, unfucking believe. People used to come walking over from the other tailgates to watch. Like, hey, he's fucking doing Ricky Henderson. Yeah, it was great. Uh, all right, so Bill's got the Chiefs. I got yep. the Ravens. Moving on to the next game, Bill. I've been thinking about this game. I've been driving Second. in the car. Thinking, I've been thinking about this game, and it hit me. I'm going to go as far as to say, for me, this is a no-brainer. And I know that could be the kiss of death. I absolutely, with all the thinking that I've done with this, love, love the Detroit Lions. I think the Detroit Lions are going there with house money that the casino gave them. They, they, all the pressure is on the 49ers. I think that the Lions got a great quarterback. I think they got a good defense. They got a coach they'll run through a wall for, and they are this close. And I love the seven points. I think it's. I think they could be in that game. And I got to be honest with you. I didn't love how the 49ers played against the Packers, man. If that kid on the Packers doesn't throw across his body, they have a chance to go down there and win the game with one drive at the end of the game. And Debo Samuel, I believe this Jake the Snake can pop in here for our injury report. I believe Debo Samuel is 50% to play and did not well, look play. Look at Jake the Snake right now. You tell me he doesn't look like Hugh Jackman getting ready to play Wolverine? Oh, I mean, look at this kid. What's going on, Jake? Ladies, he's single. Get, out, get after him. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's the one big injury from this whole weekend is um, Debo up in the air with a concussion. Um, but yeah, yeah, other than that, everyone else is going to play. But um, yeah, that's a, that's a big one for sure. He's a fantastic player. I think the Lions go in there loosey-goosey, and they got an opportunity to take out the big dog at the end of the game. I love the seven points. Your boy Paulie's taking the Lions, Bill. What do you got? Um, somebody brought up an interesting point about the 49ers. They were saying how they don't play well from behind. They haven't had to do that, uh, which kind of goes into my theory that Brock Purdy, as well as he's playing, he's driving a fucking Lamborghini. And Ooh. it's kind of like just keep it on the road. Um, I kind of feel like they had their stinkeroo last week. I can see uh, Christian McCaffrey just coming out, going up in the beginning, and I think it stays close for about a quarter and a half, and then they start pulling away and they start going like, you know, with these lines, they don't need to hang their heads. You know, this is something they can build on. Dan Campbell has them believing that they're going to fucking da da da. I just see it going that way. Seven points I do not like. I do not like them, Sam. I am. Uh, fuck. That's such a. <coughs> Once again, if it's six, 49ers all day. Uh, you know what? I think the first one's going to be close. I think 49. I think uh, Ravens and, and uh, the Chiefs will be a close one. And uh, but I think the 49ers, I don't think this is going to be close. I think they're oh. going to pull away in the second half. And uh, they're going to, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be uh, 49ers versus Chiefs. That's what um, I see. I do think the 49ers go to the Super Bowl, but I can see the Lions covering in the backdoor cover. So I'm going to take the Lions with the points and I'm going to take the Ravens. What do you uh, think about the conspiracy theory that whatever colors they use? I love that conspiracy theory that whatever it's, the Super Bowl. Three years, too. I love that. I love it's how so Super funny. Like, it's like if you're fixing years. games, what is it? Do you, is it because you want to get caught? Like, why would you do that? Oh, did you see Rashad Jennings, the ex running back? He was watching. He goes, he goes, guys, guys. He goes, can you just tell me why? He goes, why would Tampa Bay not call a timeout here? He goes, this is the shit that makes people think it's fixed. And he looks at the camera and he goes, which it's absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, what it is, is you watch like shit that doesn't make sense. And then you watch human behavior yeah. of them like fucking. I think, though, it's massaged through rule changes to give, you know, they've definitely like the level of advantage that the offense have had for the last 20 years in order to grow the sport, because they know that offense gets the casual fan. It's the problem with soccer. There's just not enough goals for an American, okay? We like portions. We like big fucking portions. And if they change that game, either they had a little person in the net or they made the goal bigger, I think Americans would start watching if the games were like seven to five. Right. I agree. At what point did you tune out during that, Paul? Jesus Christ. I felt like I was just fucking. No, I was talking to a, I'm taking was it like in. a job fair. 
No, I'm taking you it know, in. And I've uh, done some wait, waiting Wait. tables and I've, uh, where I worked on the line, too. Okay, well, we'll, we'll, find, we'll find a place for you. No, 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 no. I was, I was, I was uh, no, <laughs> I was taking it in. I think that there's two types of people that watch a game. I think there's people that watch football People who games, cry like, and people who don't. Or like people like when me and you watched, when me and you watched that Monday night game uh at your house and we sat down and we enjoyed the bangles and whatever me and you were watching it different than a fucking guy going like the fuck's he doing look at this fucking guy. like i got friends that do that look at this fucking guy this guy can't and you're like you're not it's like no dude that All happened. ball watchers yeah it's like that happened because the quarterback had two seconds because the defensive line is bullying the offensive line like that nah fuck that <laughs> it's, it's like, he doesn't want to be out there you know he got yeah. a big contract yeah yeah, the coach doesn't discipline them. That's what like those guys that call up yeah. the radio station. I watched a fight on I watched a fight on UFC the other night, and it was these two. It was a it was a co-main event, and it was these two uh, uh, female female UFC fighters going for the uh, the what is it the the fucking what was Ronda Rousey's bantamweight bantamweight championship, uh-huh. and they said that the one chick who needed to win needed to do a certain style in order to beat this Brazilian. Uh-huh. And she had to make an adjustment in the fight, which made the fight not as action packed, but made her super smart and control the time and control things. And people are going, Oh my God, this woman's fight is the most boring. I thought it was great. I actually thought it was great. And then in the interview, she yeah. goes, yeah, she goes, that fight didn't go how I planned it, but I needed to do this. And I loved it. All that was online was people going, oh, my God, this fucking woman's fight. This might be the worst fight I've ever seen. I actually thought it was cool how she made the adjustment to win the title. So, Because you appreciate the art of fighting, Paul. I appreciate All of it, offense and defense. You know, Paul, you're a very appreciative person. I like it all if it's good, man. If it's good, you know. Hey, um, I got one for you. I yeah. apologize, people. My, I'm a fucking little sick here. Um, I got one you got to go back and watch, Paul. Yeah. With your whole fucking Mayweather would have beat Hagler, Hearns, Duran, Leonard. Here's a fight you have to fucking see. Okay. Yeah, he would have gone four and zero. No, he would have gone four and zero. Just walked right through that fucking division, even no, though for- all of them took losses. That's no, just what you said, Paul. You're forgetting you one, but you're forgetting one part of that argument in the steakhouse. It's a peekaboo fucking thing. No. that wouldn't be able to deal Lawhead, with it, dude. No, Lawhead and Bartnick got me going. Going, they beat the fuck out of that little fuck. That's what got me going. They would fucking get him in the all right, corner. So you match that lack of respect with your own lack of respect. I I didn't like the guy that's undefeated and has good defense being thrown in the corner and beating the shit out of like he wasn't a champion that's made me go but go ahead yeah that 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 was that was too disrespectful you were the fairest one i could say this you were the fairest one at that table because you look at my complexion i've always been the fairest of all even though that's when (laughs) (laughs) hey bill you're always the fairest Uh, always the fairest bill said oh that was when you said get this kid a malt." three months out of the year i'm the reddest bartnick loved when you said get this kid a malt but you you go you go all right man i'll give him two and two you know, I'll give them two and two. All I was I'd even was, go three and one. I mean, but I, there's no fucking way you're fighting all of those guys. Like the like dude, Marvin Hagler you, went Marvin Hagler went to a Floyd Mayweather Jr. event, like all a memorabilia, walked up to him and he goes, dude. I'm such a huge fan. Would you sign this? You're like incredible. Like Marvin Hagler did that. So it's not like you guys, uh, not you, but somebody's like, they take that fucking little bitch, throw him in the car. They would beat the fuck out of him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Listen, yeah. listen, I never said that. No, and it's also not. like you started it saying it though. You started with, he would beat all of those guys. Did I say he would, or he could? No, it, to you is no question. <laughs> and then secondly, Marvin Hagler going up to Mayweather and saying that, you have to understand who Marvin Hagler is. All right. They fucked Marvin Hagler Rest on that soul. Leonard fight. They fucked him on that. On that thing. Like, you have to beat the champion. All right. He, Ray Leonard did not beat the champion. Right. Okay. That was like, if you want, like, the best I'll give you is that was a draw. Okay. I won't say that Hagler beat Leonard, but you have to beat the fucking champ to take the belt. And they didn't. So, what they were doing was they were fucking Marvin Hagler. Because they figured he'd be so mad he would immediately sign up for a rematch because they were getting up there in age. And it's like, we want to get paid twice and blah, 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 blah. And fuck this guy's record and all of that shit. So they fucked him. But this is what they didn't realize about him is Hagler didn't give a shit and he didn't give a fuck about money. And he just retired, said, ah, fuck it, I'm out of here. Right? 
So for years after that, Ray Leonard tried to get a rematch with him. And he was in Italy, you know, making movies and shit, doing all of that, which is the funniest conspiracy theory ever. Bartnick thinks that Hagler threw the fight so he could do fucking movies in Italy. That's how the mob paid him back. That is the funniest shit ever. Um, <laughs> can you imagine that? You're going to throw this fight. Wait, I'm going to lose to Leonard? Yeah, but you're going to be a movie star in Italy. <laughs> yeah, but if I beat Leonard, then I beat all four of them, and I'm one of the greatest of all fucking time, if not the greatest if I do that. No, no, you're going to throw this fight. But here's, here's the back. You're going to do Marvin Hagler's The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Oh, okay. Right? Anyway, years later, Hagler came back to the States. He's at some big event. And Leonard was there, and he sent one of his people over there and said, hey, man, you know, whatever you want. Let's let's have another fight. We can make a zillion dollars, blah, 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 blah. The pay-per-view would be sick. And Hagler said to that kid, he goes, tell tell Ray Leonard I said get a life. And that's the thing. That's what it was about him was he was – Done. No, but he was also at peace. He's yeah. also like – he's one of those guys where talent doesn't scare him. So he can walk up to Floyd and ask for his fucking autograph. You think Floyd would ask for Hagler's autograph? No. No. I don't know. But I'm just saying that is like – you know what yeah. I mean? Paul, you've worked with fucking like headliners, right? Coming up. There's some that just say a good job, some that ignore you when you kill. And there's other ones going like, God damn, man, you're really funny. What's your name? Here's my phone number. You need any help? I'll help you out. There's those guys. Hagler was that guy. So yeah. here's the fight you got to watch, Paul. And this guy doesn't even get brought up. You got to watch Marvin Hagler versus John the Beast Mugabe. Oh, is this what you were going to say before you said our argument thing? This is yeah, okay. That, watch that fight and no, and watch the fucking shots that Mugabe throws and takes, and know that that division was so fucking competitive. People don't even bring his name up. Yeah, it's Hagler, Hearns, Duran, uh, Leonard. There's just, there's not enough room. McJohn it's like testament. Mugabe. Testament. They bring up the big four and they leave Testament off the fucking list. And if they can totally hang with them, it's just not for some reason. It's Mount Rushmore, right? Mount Rushmore has four guys on it. Four, yeah. When I get reelected, there will be five. <laughs> I think that my head, some people are saying that my head should be above all the other heads. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's my favorite thing ever. I don't know. Um, they should put John McCain's head up there. So when he looks at it, he'd be like, who's that? It's like, that's you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh paul paul how much are you not going to watch politics this year i i cannot i'm not going to sit here and watch this shit show i think this is the end this is like a trilogy all right this is fucking <laughs> this, this is when the, fucking skywalker and vader finally fucking no this is the this is the rubber match 2016 2020 and 2024 <laughs> this is the rubber match <laughs> Uh, you know, I love what I fucking love was liberals were so fucking excited when he got booted out. I was excited too. He was just such a hateful racist fucking guy and giving like a voice to these fucking racist morons, right? It's just horrible to just see somebody like that, right? Um, so I was happy when he lost. I had no idea that he could run again and not only run again, Paul, he could win this and then we have eight more years of him. So then it becomes like, no, not liberals. We, we should have just taken our medicine, and we would have been done with them. No, you he can't can, get eight more. You can only do you can only do two terms total. No, but you can come back, and then you can you can go back to back. But I I I maybe I read it wrong. No, no, no. You can only since he since he was four years. Right, you okay, can only, here we go. Here we go. He, he can't he, he can't go eight. No, what you're thinking of is there was. And oh, I was hoping he's going to go eight. Oh my God, Hollywood would have been the was, best was place wrote, ever to live. Huh? Was it Roosevelt that did that did ended up with the extra term? I'm blanking. I know he went I, three. He back. went three years in a row because we were coming out of the depression, and then we were in World War II. Right. I thought there was one that went four, four space, and then two because they hadn't said well it was consecutive, and then they changed it. So then, oh it yeah, you're only allowed later. if you were. Other I'll, I'll look into. Oh, I thought it was like refinancing your mortgage where you went back to payment <laughs> one, and you're like, hey, my payment's lower. It's like, yeah, the fucking interest is through the goddamn roof. Bill, you want to know why I'm going to watch No Politics during this? Because my New York, make no mistake about it, I'm going to say it now. I'm going to say it now. And I mean it. I mean it. I don't the, doubt every year when you say this. The New York Knicks are now 
probably the fifth best team in the NBA, and they are going to make one more move by the deadline to get a shooter off the bench. And we are back, dude. We are back. We da, have da, 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 da. back from what? Back from being the laughing stock in the NBA. But what are you back to? Relevance. Okay. Competitiveness. All right. All right. Well, then we're, uh, we're, we're back to what? Competitive. We're back to being competitive. All right. I just wanted you. I, I want to say you. You're a talking playoff. to a guy whose team has 17 a, fucking championships. Don't sit there and talk to me like that. Don't disrespect okay. me like that, Paul. Okay. okay. No, I'm not going at you. I'm not going. Like to anybody's stuff. nervous about the fucking Knicks. That's what. That's the thing, though. Right now, you don't want to play the Knicks in the playoffs. Yes, With we this, do. No. Well, you, now, now you might. But you, you just said right now you don't want to play the Knicks in the playoffs. I said, yes, we do. And you said, no, you don't. And then you go, well, not now. No, well, I'm saying by and by May, when the playoffs come, you're going to. You, Let me you, tell you something, Paul. You know what's going to happen in the fucking playoffs? Well, we'll bet you're on You're going to go game. down there dressed like Spike Lee with all your fucking wear. You know, your no, fucking not. Knicks medallion be- and all of that shit. You guys are going to jump up and down. Don't you wish you were playing for the Knicks? And you guys are just going to fade away no, like you always do. You know I'm not going to be down there dressed. I'm going to be sitting in front of my TV with my son, biting my nails, yelling at Stacy not to bother me for three hours. <laughs> That's right, what I'm Fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. I don't hate the Knicks either. Not I now, just, thanks. I just, I the, the fact that they are still considered just so relevant and so important to the NBA while doing nothing. But losing, it's just fucking ridiculous to me. Like you get your 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 the Madison Square Garden is still it's a mecca. All a mecca means is it's a place where people go to gather. It doesn't mean like it's oh my god. I can't argue, man. Until they win, until they win, I get people saying I don't want to hear it because I Muhammad do that. Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier made that arena famous. Frank Sinatra makes that arena famous. Well, you're also forgetting. Oh no, we got to do this the Sunday night uh, parlay. Well, don't forget though. You know, Clyde Frazier and Earl the Pearl Monroe in the '70s it was a something. You know, I mean, it's a long time ago, but. I'm just saying. You know, Paul, can I ask you a question? You remember the '90s when the Houston Rockets went back to back? Is anybody calling their fucking stadium a fucking Mecca? No. And that was only 30 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you thought about arguing with that. Then you just laughed. No, oh. that's the thing. That's that's what sucks is like you can't because I do it to Met fans. Until it happens, you just got to wait. Uh, it, was, it was 50 fucking years ago. 1973 it was 51 years ago, dude. Wow. Yeah, Paul, look at you. Look how you look. Look in the mirror. Look oh, at you. Good. good, dude. Uh-huh. Yeah. How do you, what do you think you look like? Huh? Just know that in your entire time, okay, as an as a person, yeah, you've been able to get to the point where, you know, you lost your hair. <laughs> you got some white whiskers. You're growing a beard. You yeah. had a Pontiac, Paul. You drove a Pontiac SUV. All of this shit happened. And during, you know what didn't happen during your entire existence on this planet, Paul? <laughs> you slipped the disc. Uh, You've been arrested. You started had a, comedy. Had a couple kids. <laughs> you were an open micer. <laughs> you had a couple of cats that lived for like 20 fucking years. <laughs> I did. I yeah. did. But you know what? One thing I also did, though, Bill. You saw OJ when he back when he was a fucking hero, fucking movie star, to go to a murderer, double murderer, but get off on it. All of that Uh, stuff has happened, Paul. Yeah, jeans were tight. They got loose. They they became tight tight again, and now they're getting loose again. (laughs) (laughs) But I stayed loyal, Bill. Uh, What? But what hasn't happened, Paul? That entire fucking time. Come on, man. You know? <laughs> Are you doing this to me? You know. Well, you know why I'm doing this to you? Because of the, your New York arrogance. We're going to be back. We're going to be back. You, you never were. You never were. We were relevant in the 90s. Like, I mean, actually, we were, you know, we went to the finals in the 90s. You were as relevant as the Pacers until you played the Pacers. But we did go to the finals against the uh, Spurs in 99 with Sprewell. All right. Well, you guys are the first partic- participation trophy NBA franchise, Paul. Paul I'm just I'm just oh, sick well, you know of, of, you know of the fucking bravado and, and all of the fucking. It's just it, you just don't have the hardware, Paul. Paul, well, for a guy who loves jewelry, Paul. Well, here's for a guy who likes to walk around with his chain out. 
I know you know what Julie looks like. Here's the deal. You being sick of it is not going to ever stop my love and passion for my Knicks. You understand? I'm not telling you to not have love and passion. I'm just saying just choose your words carefully when you're talking to a Celtics fan. That's all. (laughs) It's respect. Like, what if I said right now, you know, after after 2018, when the Red Sox won their four, and I said, oh, this is our century. We're fucking coming, dude. And you're sitting there with 27 championships. Look at me all excited because we won four in the last 110 fucking years, right? Or 100 years. You would be looking at me like, is this guy really saying this shit to me as a Yankees fan? Is he really saying that? That's a good, that's a good point. There you go. So you had to get into your fucking ego with the Yankees for you to finally see it. No, no, no. I knew what you were doing the whole time. I saw it. But yeah, you're right. If a baseball team talked to me about their couple of cute titles and I see the almost 30, <laughs> you're right. I would be like, all right. All right. All here's right. my question. How long did the Yankees, the championship drought, would it have to go? Which is amazing that it's considered like the fact that you guys have only gone 15 years here. And that's considered like, holy shit. This is like your second longest drought. (laughs) I mean, the longest one was 1980, 1978 to 1996. That's how fucking spoiled you are as Yankee fans. I was, that was the, that like, dude, there's people just like, you know, the Phillies win one, like one every fucking 80 years or 40, 40 years, 80 years or something. To answer like how long question. would it have to go before people are like, yeah. wow, I guess 32 teams, all this jumping around with money. I guess, you know, George Steinbrenner dying like this shit is actually over. I would say to answer that question, I would say if it got to like 25 years, I think if it went another decade from now, then people would start to have to be like, all right, dude, dude, 25 years. It's a fucking quarter of a century without any winning. That would be a that would make New York fans be like what the Yankee fans go. Holy shit, dude. The, the It's over or it could be over. So yeah, I would say 25. It's not going to go 25. I just don't think I just, you guys got, no. you got too much money. You got a really good farm team. You guys were right there. I don't know what happened. I don't know. I was too busy watching the Red Sox. We just fucking just kept my, losing my, people to free agency and getting nothing back from everybody. You know, my talks focus, about what's his face. Yeah. who went to the Dodgers. Why we ever let him go. I don't know why. I don't know. Now, nah, fuck that, though. The Dodgers giving seven hundred million dollars to one pitcher. It's so stupid. I'm glad the Yankees didn't do that. You know, it's like. But the Yankees did do that, Paul. You were the original seven hundred million dollars to somebody. Just seven hundred million dollars wasn't seven hundred million dollars twenty years ago. Right, but it's still now. It's, it's to put somebody on your payroll for seven, that really fucking takes a big hit for your farm. And oh, it's your, beyond stupid. It's, it's beyond it's, stupid. But I mean, I can't listen to a Yankee fan fucking sit here and say like, can you believe how much they paid that guy? I mean, there was that time towards the end of George Steinbrenner's life. Like, there's nothing he loved more than a 38-year-old future Hall of Famer with half a season left in him and give that guy fucking $15 million. <laughs> Yeah, well, he did that late. He did that with uh, the Oakland A's, right? Who did? Steinbrenner when he got uh, – who was the other than Reggie? Didn't he get another Oakland A he too? He got Catfish Hunter. He got Reggie Jackson. Yeah. Um, no, I, I'm talking about, like, after the 2000s, when he was going after, like, you know, Randy Johnson, uh, what was it, yeah. Kevin Brown? What was that guy's name? Yeah, he got, yeah, he got an old Randy Johnson. He had Kevin Brown. He got, uh, who was the other guy? Yeah, we would get guys that were like, we'd get a couple outfielders that kind of. Luzinski, I think he gave him a hundred million. Passed it fucking prime. <laughs> um, he called Greg Luzinski up, who had been retired for 15 years. You dude, play you first know, base, you don't have to be that mobile. He's like, all right. Just, just eat up a few games for fucking Tino. Yeah, what was his name? Tino Martinez or no. Greg, Luz- Greg Luzinski? Greg Luzinski? Yeah, he was – no, that's a guy from like the 70s and 80s. Yeah, yeah. Um, he looked like a softball ringer. You know, when you play somebody <laughs> else and it's just supposed to be people, you know, one one warehouse versus another warehouse, and then this guy comes up with a fucking ass as big as a Volkswagen bug, and you're like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? Fucking we gotta go back. Sends one into the parking lot, hits somebody's Volkswagen Scirocco. That was the eighties, Paul. Those fat, out of shape guys that just would hit fucking. Oh, bombs. it's the best. It's the best. You guys had that fuck. You know that guy? You guys had Mo Vaughn. Oh my god, that guy. 
Dude, that guy hit a home run at Shea Stadium that I swear to God, I can't even believe a human being hit a ball that far. Oh, yeah, he would hit the moon shots. And he would almost fall. He would fuck. He would. And he did like that that way up there, that fucking swing. I love Mo Vaughn. Oh, Mo Vaughn hit fucking bombs, dude. Um, You know what we got to do if when the NBA Let me just go. He made little effort to field balls at first base. Who are we talking about there? Mo Vaughn. Yeah, Mo, Mo Vaughn. I, I remember being on the first baseline in the Red Sox game because, you know, a kid in the 90s, like we like Mo Vaughn. It was just that was flavor of the week. And man, I just was a flavor what, of the week. He was he was there that he was, he was there for a while. Yeah, that team yeah. around him. That guy I was mean, great. in my like 40 years of uh, fandom. But 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 yeah, he was that for that that period. He was the biggest player. But uh, no, I remember literally just <laughs> watching him like stumble forward for a ball. Just terrible fielding. Didn't always try. He could, but very rarely. But yeah, Movon was one of the one of those big yeah, guys. I loved Mo- I, I, look, yeah, he was great. Oh, yeah. dude. Fucking Fuck. moonshots. Two moon shots. I know. That's um, back when we didn't understand like hitting and running and stealing bases and all that. We just used to sign one guy after another like that. We'd always like Dave Kingman late in his career be like, dude, he gets to Fenway yeah. with the green monster. That guy's going to hit like 80 fucking home runs. Well, you know what he would do? Ground yeah. into double plays. They would just pitch yeah. those guys fucking low and inside. They would yeah. turn on it. That was before Moneyball analytics. Guys would just get sluggers back then. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know. Um, no, that's what it was all about. Uh, that's why the National League was more exciting because they were playing a complete game. Like they were playing hit and run. They were doing a stealing bases. They were doing all of that shit. They had, the, you know, it just was a more fun game. And I love watching the pitchers bat. I hate that they, they, they changed that. That's stupid. Um, anyways, Paul, this is getting late here and I got to go fucking, I got to get in the writers from here. Um, um, bringing in big boy Gian. Oh yeah. Yeah. G- Giambi was another guy. Giambi was a guy throw him at first, have him. Hopefully he fucking hits fucking bombs and, and that's it. Um, ran like he had shit in his pants, <laughs> licking his uh, lips the whole way down the licking, the, the, his, the licking his lips when he would when he would try to steal a base. He was halfway there, just struggling, <laughs> and he put his head up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, rest his rest his brother's soul. Uh, his brother passed away. Horrible man. Um, yeah, horrible. Um, Jeremy. Rest his soul. All right, so we'll do a part. Hey, what do you think about Harbaugh going to the San Diego Chargers? I think San it's great. San Diego Superchargers. I think it's great. Oh, you know, Paul is going to be picking San Diego next year. I love Herbert, and I think he's got a quarterback, a co- quarterback coach type of coach that's going to make him win. I love it. You know, what was that- awesome was reading all of these Ohio State fans calling Harbaugh a cheater. They're such fucking babies. They are such. Fu- they had the biggest fucking crybabies, and they're giving the guy no respect. And secretly, they're they're so unbelievably excited that he's gone. It's like for all you Ohio State fans out there, he didn't even coach in the game this year, and you still get your fucking ass kicked. <laughs> you are you are beyond happy that that guy is leaving. You'd be psyched if he left Michigan and came to you guys. Yeah, how great is it? You leave your alma mater. You go. Th- I mean, you leave. You go back to your alma mater, you win a championship there, and you're like, now I'm going to go to the NFL. I'm going to go to one of the, a, a good quarterback. They got a great team. I think the Chargers are going to be good. Let's do our last pick. Let's do a All pick. Right. Let's do a parlay here. <clears throat> we have the um, – we could do either one, right, Andrew? It's our, it's our world. I guess Andrew? it is. He's not here anymore. Uh, he said yes. He said yes. Okay. Which oh, game okay. do you like better? To, which game do you like better for a special, Bill? You like the Ravens and Chiefs, or do you like the Lions and Niners? Um, I think they're both pretty good. You tease the fucking. I like if can we if do you that? tease the the Forty Niners down if you or if you tease the Lions somebody up, up in that uh, Chiefs. How how much? Well, I mean that that'll, that'll affect your odds. But like, how how much can you tease these guys up and down? You, I think you could get you could it's six or you could buy seven. Andrew, can we do a tease? I never noticed though that uh, it's on the BetMGM thing. Yeah, yeah, we can. We always we've done that with the over under. We've teased it up or down. So yeah, I would hundred percent. All right, so let's do what. Let's do a champ- that- All right, so this is what we'll do. We will do a championship week tease, a two team tease. We'll take. We'll tease the 49ers down. You want to tease the 49ers down to one point? Well, I think two, I think two that'll uh, two out of three. Mahomes to throw one 
and then tease them up to like almost 10 points is pretty good. Let's just go 49ers. Just go 49ers. I, I have no idea. I mean, I have no idea on that Chiefs. I mean, I think it's going to be close, but then part of me is going like, dude, let's get the Ravens be a, at nine. Let's get the Ravens getting nine and a half. All right. Oh, you think? I mean, you think the Ravens are going to lose by ten at home? And, and I got no feeling on that game, Paul. I'm like fucking Maverick right now. It's no good. Yeah, it's no good. I can't see it. <laughs> 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 Dude, that's the, that's the best analogy. But no, it's no good. It's no good. It's no good. I Come on, Mav, pull the trigger. No, it's no good. <laughs> I gotta go back to the cruise ship and take my shirt off and play volleyball. <laughs> you know what I fucking hate about all those movies that I enjoyed in the eighties, and then people go, "It was latent homosexuality." It's like, yeah, if you were gay, <laughs> I just thought it was a bunch of guys fucking. Playing volleyball. I never thought that they were blowing each other after it. That's on you, right? Yes. Yeah. I'm like, no, dude. These guys are in good shape. The fucking plane is shaped like a dick. It's like, is it? <laughs> yeah. Dude, if I had that body, I'm no shirt on the beach playing volleyball. It's hot out. <laughs> what am I gonna do? Keep my shirt on? Um all right, it was I'll, an impromptu game of volleyball. You saw they had their jeans on. Yeah, they're not gonna all start sucking each other's dick when the game's over. <laughs> Yeah, like where does that come from? Like Batman and Robin. Oh, there's a really homosexual thing going on in there. Was there? I thought Batman was trying to fuck Catwoman. Dude, please do this on stage. That is so funny. God, that's funny. It's like, yeah, are you sure? Maybe this might be a you issue. <laughs> yeah, I think you're gay. I think you want to see these guys start queering off with each other, which is fine. But don't fucking tell me that that was the purpose of that scene. That scene was supposed to get women all excited to go to the movie. That's why they had him oiled up. They didn't do it for me. Why is he crying to his best friend about his wife? Maybe he wants to suck his dick. It's like, wait, or <laughs> or it's his friend. <laughs> or his friend died. <laughs> dude, that's the ultimate dude I called it. Maverick, watch the canopy. He fucking called it. <laughs> Goose slammed right into it and died. Oh, dude. And he had come so far. He couldn't get any pussy in college. And he was in the worst fraternity, you know? And then once they got revenge on those fucking athletes, next thing you know, he joins the armed services. He's flying jets. Oh, that's great. That's great. He's banging Meg fucking Ryan. I mean, the guy's here his whole life. Maverick called it. Watch the canopy, Goose. Bam. <laughs> That's like watch the fake punt and they call a fake punt. That was another thing the Bills did. That fucking fake punt, you know, that was oh, the end of the game. Dude, that if fake the punt defense was doesn't bail them out. Oh. No, and they put Hamlin in the middle, dude. It was predictable and terrible. Good call. Good call. Um, all right. Well, we're so gonna blame Sass. You know, we're just gonna blame him instead. Yeah, Jake, Jake the Snake just said at your own 30. Dude, yeah. your, yeah, that's a that's a bad coaching move. I'll tell you, it's great if it works. I was reckless. I don't know what I was thinking when I made that call, Paul. You would have been a hero if it worked. It's like, uh, all right, so we'll do Ravens getting nine and a half. No, 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 not 49ers minus 10. 49ers minus 10 means they got to win by 11. You don't want that. Don't you think the 49ers lo logo, that minor with the short shorts on, there's just a lot of latent homosexuality going on there? <laughs> you know, he's bending over to pan for gold. Dude, did you see Lamar Lamar Jackson's teammate go up to him on the bench and rub his head after that great play? That was to suck his dick. <laughs> no, that's the bit. It's the closeted gay guy that tries to make like everything that you're watching is gay. I mean, is, is it me or is this gay? I don't think it's gay. It's the fucking Food Network. This guy's making a, a tomahawk fucking steak here. Uh, yeah, but it looks just like a dick with some balls hanging off of it. Am I, am I, am I nuts over here? It's like, hey man, I don't, I don't know what show you're watching. That is watching so a guy cook a steak. <laughs> <laughs> the guy where everything he sees is gay is endlessly funny. It's endlessly, it's endlessly. <laughs> Dude, you see my homes hug Kelsey after that game. Well, next thing you know, he's gonna fucking grab his ass. The fuck was that? <laughs> All right, you go to IKEA lately. <laughs>
I mean, the whole um, thing, it's, I, I just can't believe they weren't playing techno music in there. I was like, I don't know. Did you, see Har- did you see Harbaugh's dad hug him when they won the national championship? <laughs> Gay shit was that? <laughs> they were crying. <laughs> Well, that Bills fan crying, I would just say that's definitely that's that was that was more in that direction than Top Gun. All right, let's let's finish this up here. All right. So let's do we're gonna take we're gonna take the 49ers down to minus one, meaning they gotta win the game by one or two, and we're gonna take the the Ravens getting nine and a half at home against the Chiefs. The Chiefs aren't going to beat the Ravens by 10, dude, on, in Baltimore. It's not going to fucking happen. I'll put money. I'll do a yeah, side bet. They, they have too good a coach. They have too good a coach. They got that too good a coach, dude. Happen. They got too good a quarterback. They got a – no, 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 no. Good defense. Yeah. Ra- Ravens getting nine and a half is as good as you're going to get, and then we'll see what happens. We'll take uh, – we'll do a two-team tease. I don't know Ravens the, is uh, kind of a gay bird. Am I nuts? Did, did it's just, the I mean, it's right there. It's just <laughs> – <laughs> all right so all right. Ravens. <laughs> so the ravens the ravens you see that logo the a chiefs of- i mean there was a guy who dressed up like a chief in the village people i mean they're practically serving it up on a platter <laughs> that whole organization is gay am i nuts dude we got to do this when we go to vegas we got to do this uh all right <laughs> that is the um that's the show, everybody. Uh, Bill has the 49ers and the Chiefs. I have the Ravens and the Lions. And our special is the Ravens getting nine and a half, the 49ers uh, giving one point. So that's our two team tease. Enjoy the tease. Enjoy the week. And of course, make sure you download the Bet MGM. I mean, why app. do they call it a tease? I mean, that's just so, that's right there. I mean, that's what a kind of tease? You're talking about strip tease? Is that what that. I didn't know where you were going. <laughs> Dude, are casinos getting gay? Tease? I'm a grown man. They don't tease me. <laughs> hey, what uh, what are they calling this weekend? Is it just championship weekend? This is in... Uh, this is it is keeping it gully? AFC, uh, NFC championship weekend? No, they kept this one traditional. This one's a championship traditional, okay. weekend. Tr- t- uh, all right, everybody, there you go. That's the show. Make sure you uh, go to the best sports book out there, the best lines there is. It is BetMGM, our sponsor. You download the app and you use our code. Our code is uh, BURR, B-U-R-R, very easy. And the promotion is awesome. You do uh, a bet uh, up to five, a little as $5, and you will get $158 in additional bets regardless of the outcome of your bet. So, Andrew, did I say that right? I want to make sure I don't mislead people, but I think that's the bet. Correct. There you go. There you go. $5. Bet responsibly. Enjoy championship weekend. Uh, I am pulling. I'm not going (coughs) to lie. I'm pulling for the city of Detroit, man. I'm pulling for Detroit. I think it would be awesome. Uh, But I also. You know what's funny? I'm rooting for Detroit and I'm rooting for the Ravens, but my money is on the opposite teams. Uh, but I do love the people of San Francisco 49ers, and uh, I love what's it called, Purdy and those guys. It'll be great. I like way. Buffalo Bill fans, too, except for the guy that pushed me in the back when I was taking a leak and that fucking guy who cried. Uh, wide right. What kind of gay shit is that? <laughs> Just everything. Uh, all right. Uh, there you go, guys. We'll see you guys. Uh, oh, next time we talk, it'll be Super Bowl week. We'll talk to you guys I next know. week. And that's the last game of the year, Paul. Dude, it's oh, this went so quick. It, it really was like it didn't happen. Did it? I mean, I feel like when it started, I was in Greece. That feels like a zillion years ago. Uh, dude, for me, I feel like we did six weeks of this and it's done. But, well, hey, what do I know? Hey, you Paul, know I mean? you know, you're in your element. You know, I just like doing the show with my friends. Fucking gay ass shit is that? You wanna... <laughs> All right. Uh, take care, everybody. We'll see you next week. <laughs> A couple of bald guys with closely cropped beards. I mean, this is one of the gayest podcasts you could be. Is it me? I know. Are they trying I, know to, I think we're trying too hard with our backgrounds, Paul. Like you have like a black, I have gray, you know, I, like I a love little home plate said, thing over there. You know, I'm just trying too hard. I mean, it's just obviously. I love the I'm one just you swimming said. in dicks over here. <laughs> when you go Batman and Robin, it's kind of gay. She says some gay ass shit. You go, is it? <laughs> yeah, I thought I was. That was kind of cool. They're beating thought, up all these weirdos. I thought it was his sidekick and friend. I, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. I'll see you guys uh, <laughs> next week.